Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. All right. First of all, giving all honor and praises to the Most High Yahweh El Elyon, to his son, only begotten son, Yahoshua HaMashiach, that came in the flesh, and we expect his return again in his full glory and power. As we await for him, I give glory to, to our maker, our sustainer, our creator, Yahweh Ahad, a unity. So as you are hearing me today, some of you might have already heard my first uh, part of this uh, warning. And so I would encourage you that uh, if you don't know all what I'm saying here, go back to the first warning after you finish this to get what it is that I have already filled in. I will be beginning in this warning where I left off in the last uh, lecture. Um, But there are some pressing things in Israel that we must address. A lot has gone on in this Pesach season. And uh, as I have brought the warning to tell you that judgment starts with the house of Israel. And I have come to tell you that that judgment has already begun. But before Yah brings a judgment, he's a fair and he's a just Elohim. He pronounces a sentence through his prophets. They are not the ones that are determining what the judgment or the condemnation is. They are the spokesmen of Yah to bring it to you so that you do not stand before him and claim in your heart, that you've been unjustly accused or unjustly judged. That's the way it happens in all courts, and that's the way Yah works it. So I have some of you may not believe that. Some of you may. I said, I come in the name of a prophet to prophesize to you what thus says Yah. And that means there is trouble. That means Someone is in trouble. That means judgment is going forth. That means condemnation is being marked, and a mark is being set, and he's starting at the sanctuary. And the sanctuary means all those who have put themselves on a bama, a bima, a platform, to speak and dispense Yah's word without him sending you to the lost sheep. We are living in a very dangerous time in this world. And you have actors playing out the roles of the Bible, apostles with costumes on, you know, and coming on as if they have a righteous judgment in the house of Israel, and there's no righteous judgment going on, as if they have the word of knowledge of the truth just because they got knowledge. So I I don't hold my tongue. I don't have to call out names. I'm speaking through the whole house of Israel, but when I'm in a house, that's the house that I'm addressing. So once again, I want to express something that's going on in Israel right now that's way out of order amongst all of Israel has been going on for a long time, and Yah is, is going to unravel this, this deception, this folly in Israel, and that is how judgment is supposed to take place. First of all, when a prophet speaks, they do not speak with compassion. They do not speak in what you would call your Jesus love. They do not speak with mercy. Now, when the prophets speak, you accuse them of not having the love of Yahushua. 
the love of Yahweh. When they speak on behalf of Lot, of Yah, you accuse them of not having mercy and compassion. That's what they all get accused of. But what you don't understand is that they're not void of compassion. They're not void of mercy. They're not void of love. But it is not their mercy, it is not their love, it is not their compassion that is moving through the spirit of judgment when a prophet speaks. Please understand that. Because you are going wrong when Yah sends a messenger to tell you what thus says Yah. And judgment does not come with compassion. But judgment is compassion if you take it. If you humble your big behinds. Shut your mouth and take it. You might have a chance for repentance. But that's not mine to give. So I know it's hot. It's getting heated early. I'm tired. It's been a long weekend. I haven't slept in three days. It's a lot going on in Israel, and y'all's doing it. Hallelujah, y'all's doing it, because he's revealing the shepherds, the false sheep. He's revealing these liars, these, these babies, these swindlers. He's revealing these adulterers. That was my last message I left off with. Oh, house of Israel, if I just had a few, I would leave, this, I would leave my people. I would leave them because they are full of adulteries, lying, deceiving, waiting. One speaks peacefully to his neighbor while he waits and lays wait to take all he has. And I'm here to accuse the whole house, starting from the sanctuary, that you're all guilty. You're all guilty. But we're going to call out a few. We're going to call out a few. And y'all has started that judgment. Y'all has started that judgment. He's going to uncover everybody. You know why? Because with this internet stuff, it's only for so much you can hide. (laughs) It's only for so much you can hide. The world is, the world wide web is connected, and the word is going out quick. And he's uncovering quick. And this, 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 this misinterpretation of the scripture, when these uh, people who have decided to get on the public World Wide Web and speak openly to the house of Israel, their doctrines, their belief, how they see it, their judgments, right? So think that when somebody is going to correct them on their false doctrines, judgments, and, and teachings, that somebody got to come along and have a private conversation. That's not Torah. Somebody needs to come and speak to you privately in love to correct you from your open folly. That's not Torah, and that's not what the prophets do, and I don't do it. I'm not here to have a conversation. I'm here to tell you. But if you want to force the conversation, so be it. So be it. But I tell you that a fool, only a fool, would defend himself before he hears the whole judgment. And a, and a fool could even look wise if they just shut up. <laughs> but we know fools won't do that. So we're going to see who's the fools. This, this, uh, this uh, season of Pesach, as Yah uncovers, where's the blood sitting? Who's sitting with the blood on their doorposts? And who the angel is coming to set a mark against. So, I want to tell you right now, all these judgments that's going to come against me that I don't have no compassion and love, they're all liars. And I can prove that there's no judgment that y'all are sending through a messenger to prove that they didn't come in love and patience before they gave a final judgment. So anybody dares accuse me, as if anybody has seen my messages already, I go after some big nuts, big cats, and some small ones. And I give you a story that none of them have, have I come and given just a judgment against without trying to approach them, speak to them, and reason with them first before they try to cross me. What you think is going to happen when y'all sends a messenger? And, and that messenger does not have to announce that they're a messenger. Be careful because you could be uh, uh, entertaining an angel unaware. That could be celestial. That could be terrestrial. But an angel, nevertheless, is simply a messenger. And messengers sometimes come to investigate on behalf of Yah, to bring the report back 
And so they don't always come to tell you in the beginning. So when you become comfortable with them, when you think that you've spoken to them and they haven't put themselves above you yet, you think that you're talking to your equal, not knowing that they're studying you and they're writing a mark. Y'all sends people to go say, check it out and see if it's true. Y'all's judgment don't look no different. He comes with proof. Though he reveals things to the prophet in the spirit, he gives them proof. And I'm telling you, I'm not somebody that don't speak without proof. Be careful. So this, 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 this teaching that's going around, this faggot, Jesus, gay, love interpretation of how these big-headed teachers and leaders want to be corrected is folly. It is not the teachings of Yahushua HaMashiach. This is a ploy to stop true judgment from going forth. And I'm going to tell you that it cannot be stopped. All you can do is speak against it and condemn yourself. So before you open your mouth to speak against someone, not a woman, you don't have to be afraid if a woman speaks. I don't teach that. You don't have to be afraid if a man speaks. I don't teach that. And if a donkey talks, maybe you should be afraid. But what you should be afraid of is when somebody comes and tells you, thus says Yah, he has sent me to give you judgment. You ought to be afraid. You better get on your knees and ask Yah, are you sure she's a prophet? So now, I do a lesson on this love judgment, hypocritical judgment, false accusations, the difference between how you come to your brother in a certain kind of a private trespass versus open folly. What y'all are saying? Oh, and these scriptures that now people want to say, well, how long, how many times are you going to forgive your brother? Seven times? Seven? And, and, and they are reading that once again out of context. Because that seven times seven comes right after the fact that he tells you when you go to your brother, he get a three-strike chance. So that don't match. So the way y'all reading that is so wrong. Once again, you don't know y'all's word. You don't know his judgment or his righteous statues of how he judges a matter. He's going to uncover everything. And he will use the wicked sometimes to uncover you. That's also something y'all need to understand. That's right. He'll use gossipers to uncover you. He'll use liars and hypocrites to uncover you. He don't always use messengers and angels. He'll use the devil to accuse you right on his platform. <laughs> so I want to let it be known right now, because that's been coming at me. It's going to continue to come at me. Why? To cause some shame and doubt on me to tell me I don't got the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you better check. You better check because judgment is compassion. And I do. I got a lot of compassion. I got a lot of love and I got a lot of patience. And just because you didn't hear the judgment from the get-go didn't mean that I wasn't exercising love and patience. So continue to accuse me of that and watch yourself condemn yourself because even the angels are careful not to bring a a report report against his honored ones. I'm going to say it again. Judgment starts with the house of Israel. Now, yes, do we have to always come forward the way you want us to come forward? No. Some of us do, we sarcastic sometimes. Go read the prophets. Yes, we got accused of being arrogant. We got accused of being prideful and all of the, all of the things that you want to accuse the wicked of. We got accused of all of that. But let me tell you something what he says about the prophets. So you, and y'all don't know how to recognize one. Israel has never been able to recognize the prophets. Never. Nor did you ever have respect for them when they were speaking. A prophet is never honored amongst his household. Never. Why? Because they become familiar with him. They think they know him. I knew you when you were young. When you were funky, who you think you are? Same thing with Yehoshua. This thing about Yehoshua didn't judge nobody and condemn nobody, that's a lie. He healed people, and when they didn't repent, he upbraided his healing. I'm tired of these false lies on my Messiah, painting him as that Jesus. 
these these pseudo Christians, these pseudo Hebrews, these Hebrew roots, ain't nothing but Christians coming into the Hebrews, trying to reteach us that Jesus stuff again, thinking they know Torah. That's right. I know some of y'all are offended because I said Jesus. I worship Yahushua. Now, Ezekiel's prophecies. He's a prophet. Y'all shut his mouth for a, for a period of time. Told him don't speak. But what he told Ezekiel was a foreshadow of the spirit of the prophets and the watches that he's going to bring in his last days. He told us don't speak for a while. Don't announce yourself. Close your mouth. He shut his mouth up. But when he says speak, speak. And what did he tell Ezekiel? Because Ezekiel's prophecies is about the last days. It's about the end time. He said, I'm going to send you to a stupid, stammering people with not a smart language, but they think they have a smart tongue. They think they speak an intelligent tongue. And I'm not sending you to many people. I'm sending you to the house of Israel. He said, I'm going to send you to a stubborn, stiff-necked, rebellious generation with a strong forehead as hard as an adamant and a flint. But guess what he said to Ezekiel? I'm going to make you just like them. So what that looked like to the wicked? That looked like arrogant, hard-headed, and stubborn. And that's what I am. That's what I am as I'm speaking in the spirit of a watchman to tell you trouble is coming. And it's starting with the house of Israel. And he has to pronounce the judgment because ain't nobody's blood going to be on my head. I'm telling you, you better repent now from all your lies, your wickedness, teaching, breaking the covenant, teaching fornications, teaching against the prophets, teaching against what the Torah says, teaching against what Messiah really taught and painting a lying picture of him. You better repent, Israel, because trouble is coming to the city. I'm blowing the trumpet because I'm not dying for your sins. He told me to speak, and I'm going to speak, and ain't nobody going to stop me. So now I got something to reveal. This is not, I've I pronounced a judgment on this uh, male-female relationship. That is called Huda and Yoshiyahu of the Ark. I know y'all familiar. They got popular real quick amongst Israel in the last two years. Anybody watch my videos know that I pronounced judgment on them a little while ago by the spirit of the matter, but I knew some things. It wasn't my judgment to make happen, but I knew that he sealed his deal. Y'all let me see the intent of that evil man's heart, and he was going to reveal him, and he's being revealed right now. And the house of Israel that knows about it, all you leaders need to stand up and make a judgment against this wickedness that has gone on with them too. Stealing from our people. Just what y'all said these leaders are coming to do. And who couldn't see that about him from the beginning? This begging pastor and his whorish wife. I knew what was going on with them. I knew when she first visited Israel what was going on. But I had to sit down and wait and stay still. So if anyone disagrees that I didn't call a judgment on it, go back and watch my, um, my Mika code. I called them out. I told them that their judgment is set and watch y'all expose them. And he is doing that. And so I, I'm, I'm here to help spread that judgment to make our people aware because a lot of people right now, you know how many phone calls I've gotten from people and people are responding because they're lost. They are devastated to find out this. And why? It's folly in Israel because it's idol worship being, is happening to our people. If a leader falls, what that mean to you? Keep on walking in Yah. You not following man. You following Yah. So if a man's breadcrumbs stop flowing to you, does that mean you, y'all don't feed you bread anymore? Where the bread of life come from? From his word. You better put it in your heart because you don't, because at the end of the day, it ain't coming through no man when we sit at the mountain to meet him face to face. It's coming through his spirit. So these people that are devastated to find out that their pastors are wicked, it, it, it should cause you to reflect inside yourself and see what's going on with you. Because I've already answered the question, why would y'all give you a bunch of tonokit? Tonokit in Hebrew means breast suckers, little babies, and swindlers and extortioners to rule over you and be your oppressors right now. That all their money is sitting, of the poor is sitting in their house. Why would he do that? 
he said, because that's what you wanted. When I sent my prophets, you didn't like them. You didn't like the way they talk. You didn't like, you don't want the judgments of Yah. You, you wanted them to come with faggot Jesus love. And so you didn't accept the real uh, men and women that Yah sent to feed you bread and give you water on behalf of him. And you still don't want that. And that's what's going on with our people. That's why the sheep still going to get scattered. It don't, even the shepherds are responsible. The sheep still going to get scattered because Yah is giving them their heart. When they're searching on the Internet, they stop where they like it. They stop at the one that makes them feel good. And that's not how Yah comes in the beginning. He comes with judgment. What came before Yahushua? Did healing come? Did mercy come? No. Who came before Yahushua to lay the path, the highway? John. What did John do? Did he just dump people in the water to be a, a water superstar? No. He said, repent, you vipers and you snakes and you hypocrites. Who's told you <laughs> to, that, that the kingdom and judgment is come? How do you know that you should be repentant right now? It is time for repentance. It is time to be in the spirit of Yom Kippur, not feasting. Because y'all ain't got nothing to feast about. Because I'm telling you that he's going to tear it up on the feast. He's going to tear it up on the feast. So one is coming down, this one. This one rose so quick that he had to bring, y'all heard his heart? He had to bring them down quick. He's not waiting to the end for some of the judgments. And th their situation is not done. Y'all is just starting with it. You're going to see some real habit go on between them two. But nevertheless, there's been a report. And that report is true, and there's been an investigation, and it's undeniable about extortion and lying and stealing. And I don't even know all the legal terms, but if you want to look it up, I put it up on my page to let that judgment go out. But the initial one that brought the uh, judgment against him with proof is Jediah Melek. And so you can go on Jediah's uh, YouTube account. Jediah Melik, and now I'm not promoting anything outside of his judgment, and look up folly in Israel. Spirit, I'm sorry, spiritual terrorism, Yoshiyah and Hulda Dawi, a warning, a warning to Zion. Go look it up before y'all start making judgments and thinking things are just hearsay and, and rumors. This is Yah's doing. And then for more information and more proof, Look up disciple of Yahush of Yahshua, disciple of Yahshua on his YouTube account and see his testimony of the folly between Huda and Yoshiahu. And there's more coming, y'all. There's more coming. The thief and the whore. The pimp and the prostitute. Just took y'all by storm. That's how blind y'all are. Just because they have some scholarship. Just because this man could talk. Nice. <laughs> Y'all are fools. That woman don't speak one, one word in Hebrew. And that fool twists every word of Yahushua to turn it into a money. A money, a money lesson, a bread lesson. This fool is going around passing green bags just like he did, like he did in the old church. Teaching y'all paleo Hebrew um, picture, school town pictures, houses and faces and, and eyes. <laughs> this is crazy. Y'all are paying this man to give y'all a drumming lesson. So I'm going to move on from that. I support the judgment that's going on with it. I called it already. Is more to come. Stand still, O Israel, and see, because that's the beginning. Is more of that coming in the house of Israel. I've already begun all my lessons. I bring out one or two liars and demons. And don't think that I'm some that just because I'm sitting behind the phone or internet that that's that's my safe place. That no, that's y'all safe place. I'm in a position that's dangerous. I've already gotten emails to kill me and murder me, like my mother was uh, killed and murdered by the hands of a man from this Betonia uh, demonic force, secret society, false messiah in Texas. I ain't scared of them goons. I call them out. So they want to send letters to me with their two little uh, goons to, talk, to threaten me that I need to be careful or I might end up like the woman in Queen. The woman is Queen is, 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 is my mother that was killed by the hands of a man, fought for two hours for her life. I ain't traumatized by it. 
but don't think that I'm no punk. I'm not afraid of death. I know what I need to be doing and the dangers of this work. Y'all are not clear about the dangers of this work. Y'all not clear. So when I say that he sent a woman, he not sitting no chump. I ain't no dyke. I ain't no homosexual. I ain't no spiritual man. I don't act like no man, but I speak with power and I speak with authority. At the end of the day, I'm a woman. That might have shaken y'all up a little bit. But that's the spirit that's going on right now. That's the spirit that is moving through me to talk. I don't have the patience right now, and nor do y'all, to speak with y'all in kind words. And no, I am not condemning the righteous. If your shoe, if your foot don't fit, don't put your foot in your mouth. And if these words don't condemn you because you know that you are innocent of anything that I'm saying, then walk with confidence in y'all. I ain't talking to you. But you ones know who I'm talking about. So we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna start with Isaiah 30. And I'm going to go back into the precedence of what I was saying about this warning that's happening in the house of Israel today. Now, once again, I know our scholars will be everything that happened, that's in the past. No, there are dual prophecies, and there are things in the prophecies that allow you to understand that these things transfer over into the end times. When I left off in my lecture, I was trying to explain the difference between something in the scripture called the kites and something in the scripture called, called the achorit hayomim, the latter days, and that there is a distinction in that. They are two consecutive events. One, the end triggers a destruction on Israel and Babylon, and it is a wrath. It's called the wrath of the Lamb, and it happens between the six and seven seals. There is a war and two earthquakes that open up the plague that will affect the whole world. After that goes down, then the latter days are imputed, and those latter days are called the last three and a half years of a seven-year jubilee. That's why it's called the latter days. So I'm going to go in to try to explain that, but there's still some more things that I want to bring out. And so I started to read, I believe it was uh, Isaiah 28, about this uh, strange act. And I said I couldn't go all through it. I'm still not going to go all through it. You can go through my lecture once again. I tell you that I explain everything, not just Isaiah. I go through all the prophets. 20 hours. That ain't no joke. 20 hours. But in Isaiah, I'm going to come to um, bring out this issue again about Land, because that is one of the biggest issues that's happening in Israel, aside for the fake fact that we have a lot of false prophets anyway. But this land thing that our brothers, this is part of the bigger scenario of the track that's going to happen in the very end. And Daniel speaks on it. I'll come back to Daniel, but I'm going to show what, you, what Isaiah talks about. But before I do that, before I do that, there is something else I want to say. This thing, you know, when we always come up against uh, Pesach, the, uh, the issue, the debate on time comes up, the lunar calendar versus uh, the Enochian sun calendar. And everybody in that mama is a scholar on calendars and time right now. All he is is, uh, like I said, men borrowing other men's words, not knowing that Yah has already de uh, depicted that Daniel said in that time, he's going to change time and knowledge, not law, time and knowledge. What? Knowledge of what, how you understand time. That's what's changing. Why is Satan changing that? Because he understood that Yehoshua fulfilled the first um, um, spring feast day on time. He understood that. Once he understood that, he knows that the prophecies are going to fulfill on the other um, uh, feast days during, during um, autumn. Jah, Jah has set a calendar, and that calendar is not based on a moon. Now, I know everybody's done their teachings, so they put it in their mouth already. I haven't put my teachings up yet. I just wait, because that's for the righteous. The righteous are going to understand that. Why? Because I made a statement. I made a statement that what's going to happen on the, that, that Yah's destruction on Israel and his plan of salvation is based on being on time with the feast days. And that the moment that 
that half an hour of silence that is depicted between the sixth and the seventh seal is the 50 days that we have that he asks us to count on Shavuot. Why does he ask us to count when you could just mark it on the calendar? He's telling you to count for a practice. Why? Because when that time happens, there will be no sun. There will be no moon. It's going to go dark. You will not know if it's morning or night. You will not know if if the day passed or if it's the next day. He's telling you to count so you know your countdown for your end gathering. And I'm telling you that that moment of silence, if you are found outside of where you're supposed to be during that, that is the time that you have the elect to get in your borders before the lights get turned off, before the AI and, and the beast in this system brings order back to the world. So this, this calendar thing is important, and y'all said he was going to hide it from us on purpose. Now, I said I keep Enoch's calendar. So you have these big pompous people, oh, she keeps Enoch's calendar. They, they think we fools. They think we fools and don't have a, a testimony in the Torah or anything, and these moon calendar teachers, <laughs> they're going to be put to shame. They are going to be put to shame. When I say I keep Enoch's calendar, I can prove the calendar from the Torah alone. Before I even touch Enoch, before I even go to Jubilee, and real knowledge on time will tell you that. You hear these people, these people talking about the moon calendar, and it don't make any real sense. First of all, all the scriptures that they are using that talks about the moon to try to justify that these are the points, they don't read. They're Tanokit. They're intelligent blind men. All you got to do is just keep reading. And you will see that the scripture interprets itself. You see these people put out one line and say, see, the moon is for appointed feet. But keep reading. It tells you what the appointed time is. The moon's appointed time is when the sun goes down and it comes up. For what? Keep reading. For the animals. The Torah tells you what the moon controls. It don't control women's menstrual. This is foolishness. We are not controlled by the moon. All women don't bleed on the same time. Okay? So stop with we the moon and they the sun. The moon don't do nothing for us. We don't follow star. They have no control over us unless you get them. And then you in idol worship. He tells you in the Torah that the moon is for high tide and low tide. That's science. Torah is being witnessed to by reality in this world. The moon has no responsibility for crops. At all. For seasons. For harvest. For grapes. For figs. For nothing. The moon does not feed that energy to crops. And there's no time. There's no kind of time that you can tell from reading the moon. And when the darkness comes, because it's coming, you ain't going to be able to see a moon. Now, I'm telling you that I can prove Enoch's calendar from Torah three times over. It's right in front of y'all face. It's right there, y'all. It's right there. And when he sends a messenger, he sends them with the knowledge of Torah to prove all things by Torah. Not no other books. Not other scholars. And so y'all wait for that because it's coming because I'm going to put all of these scholars to shame that think that they got authority in Israel to teach knowledge when they have no knowledge at all. So I know a lot of people might have already had a uh, prejudgment because I said I keep Enoch's calendar and a lot of our people don't keep Enoch's calendar. I'm not condemning them yet. I'm condemning the ones that's uh, uh, teaching with the authority like they know something and can't prove move nowhere. And I'm telling you that the that that the sun calendar is in there. And when you wanna when you wanna talk about even Jehoshua, he gave so many parables when they asked him, when when is, when is the kingdom coming? When is your return? The return is about us returning too, to meet him wherever he is. He said, y'all keep saying, ain't no man gonna know the day or the hour. Not even my father or the angels in heaven. Keep reading that. He he, he keep reading, y'all. He said, I have no need to tell you. Because you know the seasons. You walk in the day and not in the night. 
just a little tidbit for y'all, because a lot of arrogant fools come along at these times and want to condemn those that keep Enoch's calendar, speaking with such authority. And those of us that keep Enoch's calendar, the right one, is looking at y'all like, wait till they get it. Man, these idiots. But yet they speak so intelligent, and they got the people sucked up in their intelligence and their scholarship. And I'm going to say it again. That's not how y'all gives wisdom, truth, and understanding to his sent ones. They know Torah. And it's not about knowing everything in Hebrew. Because I keep telling you, all you got to do is keep reading the way y'all told you to read and stop letting people throw one line here, one line there, one line there. The Torah interprets itself. And usually it interprets itself right after the next line. So I just wanted to mention that because that's a part of my lesson. Time is a part of my lesson on teaching the elect, not the wicked. The wicked is never going to believe. They're never going to understand. They're still not going to know time. They're still not going to know when it's time to run, when it's time to do what y'all said to do, and how much time they got before it's done. But I'm going to give some wisdom to that through his prophets, how much time you got, since y'all think that nobody knows the day or the hour. <laughs> Still pick, cherry picking Yahushua's words and not listening to everything he's taught. <laughs> he's taught in parables. Yes, time is important. I haven't given that lesson yet. It might be one of my last lessons. I don't know if I'm going to put that on the World Wide Web for the wicked to know. I can prove it by Torah. Once again, I'm going to tell you these fools that keep telling you that the word key saves and 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 what's the uh, and the word um kodesh means moon. Stop it. No, it doesn't. There's one word for sun in Hebrew, and there's one word for moon. And I'm going to show you how they don't know how to read English, and they don't know Torah. I'm going to show you that our exodus fulfills the feast days, according to Enoch's calendar. Just wait for it. Here's more to come. So let's get to Isaiah 30, starting from verse 1. I'm sorry I had a long introduction, y'all, but uh, I got to talk the way the Spirit talk, uh, wants me to talk. And anything that I say is important. Isaiah 30. Well, rebellious children, says Yahweh, who execute a plan or counsel, but not from me, and pour over, slash, or inspire with a vain covering or image, and not of my spirit, to the intent that they are captured with sin on sin. So Yah saying that there is a rebellious children that is executing counsel and inspiration. So last week I talked a lot about the prophecies that he said, these false prophets that's having false dreams and visions. And then most of y'all would be like, well, I'm not a false prophet. I'm not saying I had any dreams and I'm not saying I had any visions. Oh no, he covered y'all, y'all ones that just keep saying y'all speaking from spirit. <laughs> That y'all got knowledge from the spirit, inspiration from the spirit. He covers that too. Look at what he says. Who go down to Egypt, and my mouth did not ask. Now, you might say once again, no, this is talking about those that escaped out of Babylon and went down to Egypt during the time of Jeremiah. That's what he's talking about. I'm saying yes, but no. It's double prophecy. Listen, continue to read. Why, who go down to Egypt, and my mouth you did not ask, to be strong in a place of safety of Pharaoh and seek shelter or refuge in the shadow of Egypt. What's Egypt today? That's going down there in Atlanta and all across the uh, Mississippi River, all the lands that our people are buying lands at. That's the Egypt today. He's using Egypt to simulate the, um, the land mass of where we're going back to for land. For the place of safety of Pharaoh will be your shame and shelter in the shadow of Egypt, your humiliation. For their princes are at Zohan and the messengers to Hannah, they will come. So this word Zohan, it means it was fields in Egypt. It was the plantations of Egypt. And that's what our people is taking you back to with this inspiration, to go back to the plantations of Egypt. 
Our Egypt was plantation. I told you, y'all never told us to go backwards, to go back on plantations and try to do that all over again. That's too late. You sold your land, you moved in the city, it's time to move forward, not backwards. Hannes is south of Memphis. It was, it was islands in the Nile. And so when we say south of Memphis, Memphis, if you want to look at those are all the land that our people are getting, not just our local lands in Goshen. It's a couple of groups on Watchmen Report, and it's a lot of groups doing this right now, not just among the Hebrew Israelites. Atlanta is a big hot spot and a trap. It is dual prophecy to those who fled in Egypt during the siege of Jerusalem, but it is also about us today. Let's keep reading to see why. All were ashamed like a foul smell on a people that could not benefit them, neither help nor profit, but shame and disgrace. The burden, the vision, that's, that bur- that's how we know that it's, pro- that it's prophecy for the end. This is the same burden that Jeremiah was talking about, the incoming load, what's coming, what do we expect, what's the vision of the beast in the south in the land is misfortune. Am I still here, Sal? I got you. Loud and clear. You're good. You're loud and clear. All right. Mm-hmm. For the place of Satan, what did I read? All were ashamed like a foul smell on a people that could not benefit them, neither help nor profit, but shame and disgrace. The burden or the vision of the beast in the south is the land is misfortune and distress. What beast? The beast of the people of the south that you're in. That's where they're coming. That's where the militia is coming. That's the Ku Klux Klan. That's the white supremacy. That's the image of the beast of America today that is rising up in America against you. The young and the old lion from where the viper and the fiery fire flying serpent, they will carry their riches on their shoulders of the donkey and their treasures on the humps of camels to a people that shall not benefit them. So what he's saying is that what y'all doing is coming out the cities, Getting all your, putting all your stuff in a bag and saying we're going down to the land and, and restart there. The help of Egypt is vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have called this Rahab. The word Rahab means arrogant. What? They're sitting still. Did y'all ever tell us to flee from Egypt? No, he never did. He never told us to sit still anywhere. Once we got down in Egypt, he never told us to flee anywhere. He just, he just got mad because when we went down in Egypt, he saw that we were still in idol worship. And it's the same thing that's happening now. So he calls this, this vain inspiration, this, 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 this preaching. This, you're going to see that our brothers use this for today. But now that I'm translating it for you and, 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 and revealing what it's really about, then you go, no, 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 that's about back in the day. No, that's not. Watch this. This Vain inspiration that's being taught is called, he's calling it Rahab. He's calling it arrogance. What? They're sitting still. Meaning you're refusing to come out of Egypt and thinking you're just going to sit still on the plantations. Now go, write this on the tablet before them in book. Decree it that it may be to them in the time to come. For what time to come? The time to come is the end time. For this people, rebellious are these sons, deceptive sons, sons who refuse to listen to the instruction of Yahweh, which say to those that that don't see, you don't see, and to the envisioners or the prophets that you don't envision right things to us. That's what you're telling us now. I don't want to hear what you're saying. That, you don't don't prophesy that to us. You didn't see that in the vision. Y'all didn't reveal that in his visions to you. That's what they're saying. Y'all are saying to the prophet, don't give us the instructions of Yah. But this is what they want. Speak unto us smooth things, lying visions. So that word smooth things, Yah's already described what the smooth thing is. It's an inspiration to go down back into the plantations and get some land. But if you don't believe me, the word smooth things, the word itself is telling you what it is. It's not any old smooth teaching. A lot of our brothers use this thinking that this is talking about just preachers that teach us smooth words. No, this is about a specific teaching that's going on among our smooth teachers. And what is that? It's called chalkut. Chalkut. And that word chalkut means a piece of land, a bald spot, a smooth spot. And it's a lying vision. It's an inspiration of their own spirit and not of Yah. 
and, and at inspiration, you will see our brothers preaching that as a as a uh, a doctrine that we're going to be safe in Egypt. And I told you that they still got to go through Egypt and Pharaoh to get the land. They are not independent. They got to pay taxes. They got to go to the government and ask for the land. They got laws on what they can and cannot do on the land. This is not true. Step aside, out of the way, and climb yourself out of the path or the course, causing the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. How does this inspiration and this teaching cause the Holy One to cease from before you? Because those that follow him are supposed to follow him wherever he goes. Where is he going to go? Where did he determine, according to the prophets, that he's going to meet us face to face? In the wilderness. And so this teaching is causing the Holy One to cease from going before you. Because where did he said, I'm going to go before you like a pillar of fire when you cross over the waters of Egypt into the wilderness? And y'all don't want that. Y'all read the Exodus as these holy days pass by, but you still don't see what the story was about and that he's, how he said he's going to repeat. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe in the miracle that y'all said he's going to do and even a greater miracle this time. You are causing the Holy One to cease from, from going before us with this doctrine because he's not coming when he appears. He's not coming to meet ba- you in Babylon with peace. No, y'all are getting the angel of death when he appears in Goshen. Y'all are going to get the angel of death when he appears in America, Babylon. Let's keep going. For like this says the Holy One of Israel, on, listen to this, on account of you having rejected this word and put your confidence in oppression, because that's what it is. America is still a land of oppression. And you are saying that you are living in a place of shelter, comfort, safety, and peace, going down and building these communities in the back lands of lower Egypt. Putting your confidence in this, and it's still oppression. How do I know? I'm calling it out. I know for a fact that Brother Asa on Goshen, he told me personally that he don't pay the workers. They got to volunteer. Y'all don't know that's slavery? That's against Torah? To have people working on your land and you don't pay them? That all you give them is food and shelter? That's that's the least you can do for an animal. Does he keep the laws of Torah of letting the land rest and all of that? No. None of that is going on. That's oppression. Are these people, after serving for seven years, for Brother Asa to pay off his debt for the land? Do they get, do they get to go free and, 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 and have money to buy their freedom from him? No. This is oppression, and it's the same oppression we was under during slavery. How you go volunteer on somebody's land and they don't pay you for the work? It don't make no sense. So this will be to you this iniquity like the breach that falls, a, a bulging out of the high wall that suddenly in an instant will come breaking. He's saying that all of you that's teaching this and doing this and following this, this is an iniquity. What? This Rahab, this arrogance, this sitting still, putting your confidence in America. Watch. Watch this. Watch how we know this is about the last days. It will break like smashing of a potter's jar in pieces not sparing and will not be found among it pieces as shard to take fire from kindled fire or to scoop water from a cistern. For like this says Yahweh, the Almighty, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest or comfort, that's with the Holy Spirit. Your return is the physical return and your spiritual return is in the rest and comfortness. That's the Holy Spirit. You will be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But you will not. That's why you're going to have to run. Why? Because this is what's being taught. This is what's being taught. But you said, no, not true, y'all. For we will flee upon horses. Is that, y'all, have, y'all have said, y'all know this teaching is going on. We're going to flee on horses. We're going to flee on the ships and tall sheets. He said, on this, you shall flee. Because you've spoken this, that's exactly why you're going to flee. And we will ride upon the swift. They will ride swiftly. They that pursue you. 17, 1,000 will flee at the threat of one man. Y'all think this is a joke? 
<laughs> Y'all don't see why it's going to be only one from a city, two from, from a family? 1,000 of y'all are going to flee from the threat of one man when this goes down. You will flee at the threat of five until you are left as a flag on a mountaintop as an ensign on a hill. That's end time prophecy, y'all. For Yahweh longs to be gracious to you. Now here's the, here's the result if you would do what is right and stop being arrogant. And humble yourself and become a living sacrifice. Because it is a living sacrifice to walk the ways of Yah and seek the old path. You got to give up everything, even your life. For Yahweh longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted to have compassion on you. For Yahweh is an Elohim of justice or judgment. Blessed are those who wait and long or long for him. That waiting does not mean sitting still. You already determined the waiting and sitting still is, is the iniquity. But the longing for him is longing to see him face to face. Nations prepare for war. Israel, prepare to meet your maker. Where are you supposed to meet your maker? How do you prepare for that? For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt sweep no more, shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When, when he shall hear it, he will answer. Although, and though Yahweh give you bread of adversary or tribulation and the water of oppression and distress, he's saying although he's giving you what, Jacob's trouble? You, sh- you shall not thy teachers be removed in the quarters anymore. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. That's what's going on now. The real teachers that Yah has sent, you put us in the corners. You put us in a situation that we can't speak. And you got um, um, Tanoket and, and, and babies and, and tantrum babies uh, ruling the classroom, telling the teacher, sit your butt down, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> that's exactly uh, the spirit that's going on in our classrooms, that the, te- that the students, the babies have taken over the class and caused the teachers, the real teachers, to be sat in the corner and put them on punishment. Why? Because they don't want no discipline. When a teacher comes, he has to discipline the class first. They don't want no discipline. So when the teacher comes and tries to discipline you babies, you want to put them in the corner. But he says when he returns to you, they will be, you will see them face to face. That's what he's telling you. Your eyes shall see them. This ain't going to be no YouTube ministry. This ain't going to be none of that. It's going to be face-to-face in the wilderness, and you're not going to put them in the corner. Now, let's get a precept on that. Hoshea 14, 1 through 3. This is another one that our brothers quote, talking about our, uh, the only salvation we need is just to have repentance in our hearts and our minds. Confess. That's it. No, no, no. Here's them reading this out. It tells you in the next verse. What that repentance should be. Watch this. Hoshea 14, 1 through 13. And, and when you read Hoshea 13, I've already expressed to you that Yah is talking about the last days when he comes after us as the dragon. He's working through the forces of the four beasts, the last four dragons, to come after us. Why? To cause us to flee and bring us back into the holy land. He said, I'm going to create a valley, a, 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 a door of trouble for, a, I'm sorry, a valley of trouble for a door of hope. That means the valley is a wide space. And he's going to, and the valley is a place that you are stuck in between two mountains. So when the armies come on one, you have nowhere to run but straight, which is going to come na- into a narrow door. It's going to lead you to one place, and that's in the wilderness. He's creating trouble in a wide place for you to bring you to a narrow path. Hoshea 14, 1 through 3. Return, O Israel. So we got our people keep acting like that's just spiritual. Return, O Israel, to Yahweh, your Elohim. For you have stumbled because of your iniquity. What iniquity? The iniquity that I just said, while y'all are all teaching people to sit still and wait on Yah. Take words with you and return to Yah. So we can see that these words is what's supposed to be taken with us when we return. The physical return. So he's talking about repentance and a physical return at the same time. What is these words of repentance? Our brothers are quoting this. Yah is telling you what words you're supposed to take. Listen listen to the words. Take words with you and return to Yahweh. Say, say, say to him, take away all iniquity. 
take in goodness and we will be sound and complete in the calves of our lips. This is the calves. This is what he wants you to say. And you'll return to him. This is the repentance. Assyria will not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say again our Elohim to the work of our hands. For in you, the orphan finds mercy. What's the orphan? The ones that's going to be homeless, the wanderers. The ones that are willing to get up, become homeless out of Egypt, and wander where Yah is leading you. He's saying, this is the confession that you must take in your return to him. We know Assyria is another name for America. It will not save you. You will not ride on horses. You will not say that I'm not going to stay and sit still and flee. And the work of your hands, the one that you, that's the work that you devoted yourself in Deuteronomy in this last slavery that I pointed out in my last lesson, that it wasn't that you, this slavery you wasn't sold into. You sold yourselves, you devoted yourselves, you addicted yourselves to this slavery. For what? To, to, to your servants, for the work of your hands, for goods, for idols, for house, for cars, for whatever things of covetousness that you desire that you don't believe that you can get anywhere outside of America. There is more scripture that talks about this iniquity, this inspiration of land. And I started to read it in Daniel. So we're going to go back to Daniel because that's where I ended off with trying to explain to you why this, this end on Israel, how it's going to be started. And Yah had prescribed these two events to Daniel, and Daniel didn't understand one of them. Though Daniel had understanding in all things, Yah sealed something up. Yah sealed something up. Okay, so I'm going to take that one caller um, before I start with Daniel. Go ahead. All right, let's go to the phone. Let's go to 323232. Hello? Shalom. Hey, Shalom, sister. Shalom, Sal. Um, I have a question, sister. You uh, you said that um, the Enoch calendar was um, in the Bible. Am I right or wrong? Right or wrong, right? You're right. That's what I said. Um, the the Enoch calendar, if I'm not mistaken, it's 31. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, can you show a month in the Bible that's uh 31 days? That's not. I said I can. I said I can prove Enoch's calendar in the Bible, but not according to your understanding of how Yah is revealing His calendar. There's something you have to know first, and that's why I haven't given out the lesson. I've taught this lesson for about five years. I have 300 pages on explaining three times in the New Testament, and, and I'm sorry, three times in the Old, showing Enoch's time to hide sit perfectly according to the rules of what a Shabbat, Shabbaton is versus the other holy days. So I'm going to give you a little clue. I can't prove that right now. That is, that is very, he hid that on purpose. And so I will give that lesson. I am willing I am willing, but it's difficult while I'm online because I got charts. We have to map it out. I have to do a mathematical sequence that's in the Torah on our Exodus to show you. There is a reason why Moses gave certain times, dates, and, um, and, um, and uh, 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 yeah, times and dates and scenarios in our Exodus, and he didn't mark everything. If anybody knows math, how to figure out an equation, get to an answer, when you have two points, or you have three, three, three points of information, you can map that out in a, in a mathematical equation to find out what's the answer. But that's not the only thing. So this is what I can give you now. No, I cannot prove that right now. That's not the way he's, um, he's delivering the calendar. This is the way the Greco-Roman mindset tells you how to count a calendar. <laughs> and that's what y'all are looking for in the Bible. That's, that's how y'all are looking for it. But this prophet wrote, to hide things from the wicked and the ones that was ready to open up and receive and humble themselves and say, maybe I don't know, to receive it when they actually hear it. And so, yes, I do know that people are skeptical of Enoch, the book of Enoch and Jubilee. I can understand that. If you, if somebody comes along and shows you and proves it in the Torah, that's the end of the deal. I'm saying this is not this lesson tonight. I, I'm going to prove it, but in its time, in its time. So this is what I will give you, brother. I'm going to ask you a question. 
What is the definition of the word Shabbat? Wait a minute. So wait for okay. So <laughs> you're saying that. You can't prove a, a, a 31 day calendar from the Torah, is what you're saying, correct? No, I'm saying I can prove it, not according to how you want me to prove it. You're looking for a word and a sentence. That's not the way y'all revealed it. Daniel okay, already what? said that time and the knowledge of time would be hidden, will be changed. There's a reason why he's hiding the calendar from our people right now. Okay, he's if only going to Sister, if, if, he, if he's hiding it from our people, how how did you get it then if he's hiding it from our people? That's a great question. Didn't I just say I'm a prophet? Didn't oh, I just say I was prophet. anointed? Yes. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't, I, I didn't, I I didn't hear I that part. Anointed. I didn't hear that part. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I didn't hear that part, that. sister. I'm sorry. I'm I, didn't, I, I didn't hear that part. The Holy, okay, I'm telling you by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It didn't happen all at once. Even I did not keep Enoch's calendar. This also is a rift in my family, but we're going to reconcile it. We're going to reconcile I know for a fact that the Jews have already admitted here that the lunar calendar they got, they've created it, and it's wrong. That is a known fact among them, but they, don't, they argue it in here because they know the lunar calendar is wrong. It's argued among them. They have just made a uh, unified decision to keep that calendar for their unity right now. Why? They, I got a whole book. That they have mapped out the lunar calendar for 5,000 years already, and they're trying to fulfill prophecy according to that. Here's another thing okay. I'll tell you. Do you know it was a full moon the day before Pesach here in Israel? It was a full moon the day before Pesach here in Israel. But this is, I'm trying to give you a clue, brother. I can't prove that here, and I'm not going to go through a debate right now with you. If you want to, you, just, you might have to just wait and be patient. You just might have to wait and be patient because I'm not going to prove it from Enoch. I'm going to prove it from Torah first, and I'm trying to give you a clue of, um, of how y'all explained or brought me to a point that led to another point that led to the equation where the calendar is there. Now, I'm asking you again, what is the definition? And I'm not trying to put you in the pigeonhole. Let me just ask. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to tell you. Shabbat. When y'all mentions the word Shabbat, there's only one definition of Shabbat, and that is the seventh day. So anything in the scripture, in Hebrew, it doesn't read that way in English, but anything in the scripture in Hebrew that, ha- that says Shabbat must be on a Shabbat. We have things called Shabbat Shabbatons, but there's only one holy day on the, of the seven holy days that's called the Shabbat Shabbaton, and that's Yom Kippur. So Yom Kippur, by definition, must be on Shabbat. And it's always on the The only thing that is called Shabbat Shabbaton is Shabbat, uh, the, seventh year, the seventh day, the seventh year jubilee, and the 49th um, jubilee, which are all Yom Kippur. And they are always on Shabbat. And according to, I believe, um, Isaiah 53 or is it 63, when he talks about he's waiting for y'all to keep that one Shabbat. That talks about that's the day of the great fast, correct. And when you do it right, that's when salvation is going to be delivered to you. People read that and split it up, not understanding he's talking about the one fast that he actually called and called it a delight. It's, it's Yom Kippur. That's when you're going to see your deliverance and salvation when you do that right. And it's on a Shabbat. It's a great Shabbat. Enoch's calendar is the only one that promotes that. It also is the only one that promotes the actual, um, how do I say, manifestation of when Yahushua fulfilled. Isaiah 58. People are calling Pesach a, a Shabbat. Pesach is not a Shabbat. None of the, of, of the spring feast days except Shavuot are considered sh- um, Shabbatons. Now, there are all the, um, the, all the feast days in, in, the, in the autumn to the winter, if they're not sitting on the Shabbat, he calls them Shabbatons. That is not a Shabbat, but you must keep it like a Shabbat. Why? Because from, from, from everything that is called a Shabbat or a Shabbaton, those are the feast days that's ushering in the kingdom, the manifestation of the gathering and the, rede- the full redemption of Israel. Pesach did not offer the full redemption. Feast of Unleavened Bread did not offer full redemption. It's only the first part of the plan. That's why they're not Shabbat or Shabbatons. That's all I can say to you right now, brother. That's not my. Uh, this is not my lesson. Do you do you do, do you believe in the uh, the renewed testament? Yes, I do. 
Absolutely. And it's going to be renewed again at the mountain. Okay, in, okay, in, 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 in the book of St. John's, chapter 19, they called the Feast of Unleavened Bread a Sabbath. You're saying, you're saying right. they're, you're wrong. mistaken? That's right. So, Go back so, and so, so you're saying that you saying that the ancient Israelites back then in the first century, when they called it that, they were mistaken, and you're correct. No, no, no. I'm saying Torah is correct, and whoever translated the Bible that you got that you're reading from translated it wrong. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so they, 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 they mistranslated oh, St. No, 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 John no, no, chapter 19? Brother, brother, listen to me. I just said, go back and read Torah and see if you can find anywhere in Torah, Torah, where Pesach or Feast of Unleavened Bread is considered a Shabbat or a Shabbaton. Never. You ain't going to find one scripture. It is considered a low malakto, meaning don't do no survival work. But why is it not a Shabbat? Because it doesn't usher in the great Shabbat, your great rest. It starts from Shavuot. Why? Because that is the time of your deliverance that is entering you into the kingdom, the great Shabbat, the great rest, a thousand years. Pesach was the first half of the plan of deliverance. It did not usher in the kingdom. You got to complete the second half. According to time Please go back and listen brother That's three questions That's a mini debate I don't do many debates I, It's not a debate It's a discussion But that is not something That you could just prove In, in a, a car drive <laughs> Like these people want to talk And it's not something That you should talk about In one hour And read a scripture here And a scripture there It's about the season The seasons are depicted By the sun About spring Winter he made a covenant with the four seasons in Genesis. <laughs> but I, we got to move on, brother. Okay. Another okay, time. Just before I go, can, can, I, can I ask one more question before I leave? One more question that, 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 that you spoke about? You're pushing it, but you, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to give you the patience. You spoke, you, you, spoke on, you spoke on the three and a half years in uh, Revelations, correct? That's right, yes. Mm-hmm. Which, is, which, which, is, which is also broken down as 42 months. Also broken down as 1,260 days, correct? Um, off the top of my head, I'm going to say correct. Off the top of okay. my head. Because I, there's a map that I, I have to give out. Because Daniel gives some numbers that's shy of that. And so when it talk, it, it's a reason why sometimes it says it doesn't. In the same chapter, he will, you, he will say uh, times, times and a half. Then he will say 42 and then he'll give another way. There's a reason why he's changing the lingo from, from, each, from each thing. Why is he not using the same lingo? There's a reason for it. It's still counted as uh, uh, for, uh, 42 months. But here's the thing. I do the map. I do the Revelations map. And you have to coincide that with Daniel's numbers. And so they are shy three and a half years for something else to fulfill in prophecy that you're, you, I can't explain to you right now in Revelation. It has something to do with um, the time of silence, and it has something to do with he, blessed is he who makes it to the 1,335th day. Have you, have you reconciled Daniel's numbers with Revelation? There is periods that is shy of three and a half years. There's a reason for it because prophecy has spelled out something particular that is going to happen in those days. Not to mention that all the prophecy is not happening on the feast days. The beast has his own feast days that is trying to fulfill prophecy. So you must understand if the prophecy is talking about Israel or is it something talking about what the beast is going to fulfill on his appointed feast days. That's all I can say, brother. It's complicated. It's complicated. Okay, I, sister, I, but, didn't, but, I, didn't get, I didn't get to my question. I'm just, I didn't get to my question. I'm just I'm asking yeah, you specifically about Revelations math that the, the math of That was one question, months, brother, and I said yes. That was one question, and I said, yes, if you string a, a series of questions that's called a debate, you have taken up a lot of time, and that is not this conversation. I'm sorry, brother. I can't do this right now. That is not the lesson. I appreciate you, though, and I've heard of your, some of your teachings. I appreciate some of your teachings. All right, so we're going to have to move on, but uh, we asked somebody that pressed number one earlier, but they, I guess they took themselves on the switchboard. So you can All right, I'm going to put in one more stuff. question. Go ahead. Oh, no, there's nobody else standing by. At this time. Okay. All right. So let's continue on. I said again that in Daniel, there's something, oh, in all the prophets, there's something that's called kites. And kites, by definition, means summer. 
it is marking the end. Now, uh, the brother, if he wants, like I said, I'm not doing all the timelines. I do deal with pieces of the timeline and parts of Revelation. That's not something I'm going to reveal until I'm finished at the end of my ministry. The time is the last thing that you need to know. You need to understand the plan that's going to sit on the time. But this thing called the end versus the um, latter days, Daniel depicts both of them, and he said that he didn't understand something. So I want to read that, I, I, and this is where I left off, uh, I believe, two weeks ago. So I'm skipping. I'm in Daniel 11, and I'm going to skip down to 33. It's, it, it says, and the intellectual, or the intel. did I want to go earlier? Where did I leave off? Oh, the, yes, I left off at 32, that the wicked of the, against the covenant will flatter, and it says, with flatteries. That word is the same word that I just read in, Jer- um, in Isaiah, I'm sorry, in, in Jeremiah about, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 30 about a bald spot, a smooth spot of land. It's called flattery. Sometimes it's called hypocrisy. They translate it as flattery, hypocrisy, or a smooth thing. But that same word is halku, and it means a plot of land. Those are the wicked people that is against the covenant because Yah has already declared where he's going to reestablish or finalize the fulfillment of the covenant. The blood of Messiah fulfilled only the first half. The other half, we are supposed to meet him face to face. There's something we didn't do in the Exodus. And as all of y'all went through the Pesach, I'm promising you that all of y'all leaders still don't read the story right and understand what didn't take place that was supposed to take place while we never became a nation of priests and kings. What was supposed to take place at the foot of the mountain when we finished hearing Yah's word? The word, hearing Yah's word, and letting it enter into your mind and extend to your heart is how you receive the Holy Spirit. But that comes with fear, and that fear is what initiates the true wisdom of Yah, the true tree of life. And so what took place is that we stopped Yah at 10 for fear of the fire and the thunder and the lightning. But if you read, Moses was not the only one that was supposed to go up in the mountain. The whole nation was supposed to go up after they heard the finality and the trumpet grow loud. People missed that. That we were supposed, what, is, what does that mean? We was, we was all going to go up in the mountain and stand? What was going to happen? The same thing is going to happen the second time. We're going to transform into angels of light. When we stand in his fire, we were supposed to go up and walk in the fire. We were the sacrifices. We would have burned, but it wouldn't hurt we would have, our flesh would have burned and we would have transformed into the light beating back to Adam. He was offering us the promise then. We failed. We failed. So the covenant that Moses went to get had to go through him now uh, according to the flesh, not according to the Adam man, the real promise of everlasting life. He was giving us the promise. He was giving us, he knew what we would do. Moses was not the only one that was supposed to go up. He would not have been the great lawgiver. That wasn't his destiny. His destiny was just to lead you to the foot of the mountain. But you asked for a Moses because you didn't want to hear Yah's voice, but you got to hear it. You got to hear it. And you got to stand in this fire. We're going back to that mountain and we're going up and we're going to stand. And that's not no Hollywood. That's the word. That's excellent. Go back and read. Your pastors don't want to read that. We was asked. Yes, he put bounds, but it says when the trumpet ground grows long and waxes long, then tell the people they can come up. They had to be holy. They had to be purified by the Holy Spirit by hearing Yah's word and standing in fear. But because we weren't holy, we couldn't touch the mountain yet. It would have, it would have stoned us. It would have destroyed us while we were still in the flesh. So that's what the Holy Spirit, the first, the covenant that we got with uh, the new, renewed covenant is doing for us now to get us holy enough to go back and do it all over again and get the first covenant, the real covenant, to hear it direct from Yah, not through a man, not through a man. 33, and the intellectual among the people understood for many, yet they will stumble fall by the sword, a blazing flame and captivity and spoil for days. So this is what he talks about is going to happen in the land of the south 
which is the realm of Grecia, against with the with the war against Persia, the king of Persia, the last of the four of the four kings of Persia, which is letting you know it's the last king. How do we know that this is in the last days? It says thirty four. Now, when they shall fall, they will be helped with a little help, and many will join them in smoothness. That's that same word. Many people, when we start seeing the trouble that's going to happen in the lands of Grecia, we people are going to say, I got some land. Come, you'll be safe here. That's what's happening now. And I told you when that trouble comes against us from within the nation that we are in, that's where y'all going to start, start running if you don't get it in your mind and still don't understand. And y'all got this Christian understanding that Yahushua fulfilled it all in that one moment. And he didn't intend for uh, part two of the covenant to go right back to what y'all intended from the first place, to go get it direct from him, from, the, from his mouth, while he's in his glory, to stand in his glory. You are wicked against the covenant. Nobody's going to override Ezekiel when he says, I'm going to bring you back to the, um, the mountain and bring you back underneath that covenant and the rod. So it says, 35, and those who are intelligent will stumble. Yes, these intelligent ones amongst us, the ones that got understanding, the ones that are intellectuals. That word is um, mashkile. That is not the one, that is not hakmat. That is not the ones that have the wisdom of Yah. They have intelligence. That's what I'm telling you. Your leaders are just intelligent fools, and they're wicked against the covenant. And y'all are elated with people that come with lots of intelligence to think that that's the prerequisite on to lead you according to the word of Yah. And that's how Yah reveals mysteries in this book. There's mysteries in this book. It's written in a way to seal it from the wicked. So it says, and of those that are intelligent will stumble and fall to refine, smoke them, or to, or to purify them or to choose and to make them white until the time of the height, the end, because it is yet for an appointed time. So he's telling you that this height, this end is a moed. It is an appointed time. And the word height points to which appointed time this is going to fulfill itself. It's during the feast of Shavuot. That's when the kite is initiated. That's the determining uh, timeline of those who is going to make it out and enter into the place of safety and rest, which is the kingdom, but is going to be hidden from the world for three, for three and a half years, while they have taken the whole world and emulated the kingdom by force. Both kingdoms are manifested at the same time. How do we know this? Because Daniel tells that he's a little rock. He's a little stone kingdom that's going to smite the image. So that means there's two kingdoms that is existing in the same time. So I'm going to read down the 40. It says, and in the time of the end, the heights, the king of the south will collide with him, and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots and with horsemen and with ships. With many he will enter countries. That word countries is called assault. The word assault is how we call America today. It's called assault or breach. But not just America, all those countries. But he's storming in. Overflow them and pass through. He will enter into the glorious land. So after he finished with America, now he's going to enter into the glorious land, which is coming up to north, going through Africa, coming up to northeast, north, northeast Africa. How do we know? Because he's telling you what, after he's finished with those countries, where he's coming. And many will be overthrown. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to escape the beast. And these shall slip away from his hand. This is a clue that I'm trying to tell you. Edom, Moab, and the chief sons of Ammon. He's telling you the only nation that's going to slip away from coming underneath the mark of the beast system. Why is that? I explained that. I explained that. I believe in the Mika Code. What's going to take place in those lands that the mark of the, that the, the beast, not the mark of the beast, the beast system is not going to conquer those lands? Why Yah is declaring that that's where our safety place is? <laughs> then he will stretch out his hand against other countries. He's coming to take the whole world, and the land of Egypt will not escape. So, no, I don't tell you to go into Egypt. I do tell you to go into the Sinai. The Sinai is already prophesied that most of us is walking over the wadis of Egypt. And I'm telling you that we're walking over the same path we went before. I know Sinai, Egypt. It's a beautiful place. I got some, don't forget to remind me, I got some information for people that are really seeking. 
Let's go to 43. And he will gain control over hidden treasures of gold and silver and of precious things, Egypt and the Libyans and the Cushites at his step. Those three nations are the three African nations that will make up the ten toe nations in the end, according to Ezekiel. Be, but reports shall disturb him from the east and the north. He shall go out with great fury to exterminate and utterly destroy many. He will pitch tents of his pavilion between the seas and the beautiful majestic mountains. So now this is describing the very last war. After he destroys Israel and the countries and takes over the world in the end, it's describing what he's going to do after that in the latter part of his reign. He's coming against the majestic mountains, which is Israel. Where are we going to be? In the mountains. Yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. So where is it? Give me one second. This is where I wanted to, I wanted to bring you to Daniel 12 now to show you. Now, after he describes all that to Daniel, Daniel begins to ask him now, I heard what you say, but I don't understand. Give me one second. It looks like I didn't mark it out. Daniel 12. Give me one second, y'all. Okay, Daniel 12. I'm just going to, from verse 1, I'm going to skip down some, some scriptures. Y'all can go back and read it and see what it's talking about. At the end shall Mikael stand up, the great pinch which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. So we know this is Jacob's trouble. So what is this time? Jacob's trouble, the wicked will be destroyed. Michael is going to stand up for the righteous for us to be delivered. Such as never was since there was a nation, even at that, that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Yes, Yah's people shall be delivered, but the wicked of our people will not. How do we know this? Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So it's not telling you all of Israel shall be delivered. The ones that are found written in the book. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal it up. Seal up the book until the time of the end. Ad et chait. So this vision that he's giving, is it, it was sealed. A lot of people have been speaking like they understand it, but it was sealed even to Daniel. Let me, let me show you how we know. Many will row or surf and knowledge will be. What is this rowing and surfing? Um, I think it says many will go to and fro, but if you look at that word, it's a word trying to describe what's going on in technology today. It means row and surf. What do we do on the Internet? We surf. Is that, that's the it's terrible. It's real terrible. That's the only way knowledge is coming to our people in truth because you're going to have Satan there before you get to the truth. Keep rowing. Keep surfing. Stop stopping at the teacher that you impressed with. Stop finding the one that, that makes you feel good. Keep rowing. Keep searching. At the time of the end, knowledge will increase. I heard a man. I heard the man. So this is what he said. I heard the man. I'm in seven. I read four. I skipped two and three. Seven says, I heard the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, and he, was ra and he raised his right hand and his left towards the heavens and swore by him that lives forever, for that it would be for a time, times, and a half a time, and finish, or the accomplishment of shattering the power of the holy people will be the finishing of all of these. So this is the same thing that Matthew 20 was, it's called the height, it's called the end, it's not called the latter days. This is the time of the end, and it's, for a, it's called Jacob's Trouble, and it's for a three-and-a-half-year period. It finishes at the end. We know that Israel, that's written in the book of life, makes it out of this, but the wicked of us not, because it's called, it is the accomplishment of shattering of your people. It's the finish, and that's what um, Lamentations tell you. That's what Micah tells you. That's what Matthews tell you. It's a shattering of Israel when no stone shall be left upon another. And this is our sign everywhere we are in the world. I got some African brothers and sisters of the Yahweh um, assemblies listening to me now. Brothers and sisters from Nigeria, I've already told you, when you see that go down, goes down in America with our people, it is our time to start fleeing and running. Because after he finishes with America and the Northlands, he's coming through Africa and he's already set up there. It's going to be quick. His army is already set up to, to, to check us at all points. All of this stuff of, of, of Israel trying to prove to the Jews and to the world that we are Israel. And they're coming in with these rabbis saying, give us some proof. We want to welcome you in. No, they are not. They are, set, they are marking you. They are censoring everywhere in the world that we are claiming to be Israel. They are setting up stages for us. 
we will be fleeing all through Africa. I'm going to eight. And I, so this is what Daniel says. He just got finished saying, I'm going to deliver your, um, your holy people. But then he just got finished saying, at the same time, uh, this is the finishing of the shattering of your people. So this is what Daniel says in response to that. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked my master, so what is the achorit of these? He said, so if that's the end, and I know that's not your problem, then what happens after that? What's the after days? What's the achorit? What's happening after that? This is what he says. He said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the time of the end, which this end is coming upon us soon, and he's revealing the end through his prophets. Those that have an ear better hear. Many will be purified or choose. This purification is something you must choose. You gotta be cho- you gotta choose to do this. And you have to reconcile Daniel's timeline with revelations. And I ain't seen nobody that did it yet. Nobody. They don't understand. And made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. Of who? Our people. What's the wicked? The ones that don't want to leave. And none and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. This mystery, Yah is not going to reveal. And it has something to do with his timeline. From the moment the daily will be turned aside, set apart, or, 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 or aside or depart, and let the abomination that desolates will be 1,290 days. You have, there's something that's reconciling these numbers of what the beast is going to do versus what Yah is going to do. And they're close in number, but they, they, they distinctly... Um, Miss the mark. They're still somewhat three and a half years, but they're slightly 45 days. There's a reason for that because we are going by two calendars. And they are, go- and they are fulfilling their prophecies according to these calendars that y'all are keeping that they taught you. From the moment the daily will be turned aside and the, let the abomination that desolates will be 1,290 days. Happy is he who waits and arrives at the 1,335th day. I'm not going to talk about that, but that is the end. That is the end. There is an after of that. And they coincide with Revelation's timeline. So that's what I wanted to say about that. There is so much more that I could say about that. But I'm just got to give you the point. And the point is to open up your eyes. To know, to understand, whether you understand all the vision or not, you might just have to wait and be obedient. The prophet said, through the prophets, come out. I will do nothing. When he says I'll do nothing before revealing it to my prophets, it's about your deliverance. It's about time. It's about when to move and when not to move, where to go and where not to go. All the prophets had that. Y'all gave it to the prophets when it was necessary to know. And they deter- y'all determined who the prophets will give it to. So we're going to go into the four winds. We're going to talk about the four winds because everybody talks about the four winds. The four winds. What's the four winds? Let's go to, I'm going to show you that the four winds mark this thing called the end. Let's go to Ezekiel 7, 1 through 7. And I'm skipping so much, but I just got to make the point. Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 7, 1 through 7. Here we go. Moreover, now, I bring this out in my lecture, and I I summon people to go back and do, do the research. Ezekiel is not in timeline order. His prophecies are not in order. And a lot of his, all of his prophecies from one through seven and some other, I have it mapped out not at the type of my head, are all prophecies that could not have been talking about the siege in Jerusalem at that time because he prophesied them after the final siege. So this prophecy is not about that destruction. But Ezekiel's prophecy makes it clear if they are doing or if he's talking about the end. Ezekiel 7, 1 through 7. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Also, you son of man, thus saith Yahweh Elohim to the land of Israel. An end, height. The end is come on the fours, like the four corners of the land. So why is he telling Israel this? Because we are scattered in the four corners of the land. And it's called, when he destroys the four corners, this is what Zechariah is talking about when he says, I saw four horns and I saw four carvers. Who are these four horns? These are the four horns that scattered Israel to the four corners of the, of, the, of the world. What's those four corners? 
Those four nations, Britain, France, Portugal, Spain, and they set up the new world in that corner, four corners of the world. That's where we are scattered. And so who are these carvers, Zechariah says? Oh, these carvers will come to destroy the four horns. <laughs> so we're talking about a war. It's called the end. And we are involved with that because the four that are coming to their end, as I told you, in the land of America, is our end if we don't come out. And when you read all the scriptures that keep telling you why you should come out, he's describing this war that's going to take place within those four corners, and particularly those northern lands of America that will be totally destroyed. Now the end is on you. So he's telling you that the four corners that you have been scattered to, there is a war, and it's called the end, and they will be destroyed. But this is also the end on you. This is how you're going to be destroyed. This is how you're going to get Sodom and Gomorrah, Zeboam and Adama. Because you are in those lands, and I told you to come out. I will send my anger on you, and I will judge you according to your ways, and I will give you all your abominations. And my eyes shall not look with compassion compassion on you, neither will I have pity. But I will give your ways on you, and your abominations shall be in the middle of you, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come. The heights is come. It waits for you, the heights. Behold, it comes. The doom, it comes to you. And you that dwell in the land, the time is come. The day of trouble, the day of destruction, turn or panic, is near. And not cheer or a shout of mountains. This is not your victory where you're going to be shouting joy on the mountains. All right, let's talk. Let's get some more precepts on what these four winds are, because we were scattered to the four winds. And how were we scattered to the four winds? And I saw a beast for striving up for a beast that strove up out the seas, meaning coming up out the nation to do what? To conquer through what? Through war. What's the four winds? The four winds is a world wind that's striving up out of the nations, trouble out of the nations. It is. Four nations that's stirring up to war. That's the four winds. Okay, so I injected that. Let's see. Let's read. Let's read uh, Ezekiel thirty-seven one through seven. Oh, I lost that page. Oh, I might have to skip Ezekiel one through seven because I'm not reading from my Bible right now. Ooh, ooh, give me a second, y'all. How did I not have it? All right, um, find Ezekiel. We're going to skip to uh, Ezekiel 16, 1 through 7. Ezekiel 16. Oh, I don't need, I don't have none of that. Oh, yes, I do. Ezekiel 16, 1 through 7. Yeah. Ezekiel. 16, 1 through 7. Give me a second. Here we are. Then the word of Yahweh came to me saying, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations, and say, Thus says my master Yahweh, Yah Yahweh to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth, your kindred, are from the land of the Canaanite. Your father is an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, and on the day that you were born, your navel was not cut, nor was you washed in the water of cleansing, and the salt you were not salted, and the diaper you were not wrapped. So he's talking about when he birthed us in the nation, we were still full of iniquity. No eye looked with you on, uh, looked with pity on you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you. Rather, sorry, four winds, yeah. Rather you were thrown out in the open field, for you were abhorred on the day you were born. When I will pass by, I will see you squirming in your blood, and I will say to you in your blood, live. Yes, say to you in your blood, live. So there is going to be a destruction of us, a destruction of us, where he's going to cause us to live, to live at the same time. And a multitude, as and multiply you as a bud of the field, causing you to grow up, becoming tall, and reached at the age of fine ornaments. Your breasts were formed and your hair grows. You were you you yet you were naked and bare. 
So I talk about that, how Yah says he's going to strip us naked and bare um, in our destruction, but he's going to cover us with mercy in the end. So I'm going to, that goes, that, that prophecy goes in, in lieu with Ezekiel 37, the dry bones. So let's read Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, 1 through 7. The hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out into the into the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass, pass by them round about. The dry bones means that you have, you are void of the waters of Yah, which is the Holy Spirit. You have dry wells. There's no life in your blood, in your bones and caused me to pass and, ca- and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there was very many in the open valley and lo, They were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Can this hopeless nation live? Answered, O Yahweh, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. So he's going to send prophets in the spirit of Ezekiel. These are not headed, hard headed. (laughs) Adam is a flint prophet that he's sending to prophesy. And what is this prophecy? Prophesize to the dry bones. Hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh unto these dry bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring you up, uh, bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to bone, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews of the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So they came together as a nation. But yet there was no breath, no Holy Spirit in them. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath, O breath upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, and so this exceedingly great army is when we gather, that's the army. That's when we become the army, and he's going to use us for the last battle of Ezekiel 38. Then he said unto me, son of man, these dry bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. So he's explaining to you what this hope looks like. It looks it looks like the shattering that and these four winds have cut you off completely. This is what y'all said. I'm going to cut you off completely. That's what it's going to look like. That's what it's going to look like. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. That's what it's about. Let's get another precept. And I got so many scriptures, but I just want to prove the point. I, I just want to prove the point. So let's go to, give me a second. Where is it? Let's go to Psalms. 55, 5 through 8. Let's see what these four winds are. Fear and trembling will come to me to cover or overspread me with horror. That horror is the same horror that was given to, to Abraham in his vision, his terror, before his terror vision. And in, in his vision, he was told to what? Sacrifice the heifer, the lamb, the uh, turtle dove, um, and, and for three, split them up. Split them up. And this is, this is a prophecy that's telling you that there's going to be a sacrifice. The lamb, the goat, the ram, the turtle dove, and, uh, and the chickling represent the whole house, a sacrifice offering of the whole house of Israel for sin and iniquity. And he says, uh, split, split the calf and the ram, but don't cut the turtle dove or the chickling. Who, what represents the turtle dove and the chickling? The ones that have the Holy Spirit, the poor and the meek in the spirit. And so there's going to be a sacrifice among Israel for three and a half years. So here it is. Fear and trembling will come on me to cover or overspread me with horror. I said, who will give me wings like a dove? The wings like a dove mean who will give me the Holy Spirit? Who will smack me and prophesy to these dry bones to breathe that I would fly away and settle and rest? 
see far off. I will flee. So he's telling you who's going to give me the Holy Spirit to make me see that I need to flee. Flee from what? To lodge or remain in the wilderness. See, like how many scriptures can I keep telling you what he's telling them? The Holy Spirit is trying to get, to get you to do. I will make haste and escape for me from wind, from the spirit, meruach, from the storm and the tempest. That's the storm that's coming, y'all. That's the full wind. It is four nations rising up for, for war against another four nations. And the war, four nations are, are where the four winds we've been scattered. And, and trouble is coming in those nations through war. And that is going to be their end and our end. And the Holy Spirit, I said again, is here to smack you in the face, get you to open up your eyes. The Holy Spirit is here to testify to all things that have been written, that you have heard. Maybe you didn't understand, but you heard all these scriptures before. So I'm here breathing on you to prophesy, to get you to see what the Spirit is saying. Flee into the wilderness. You will make haste from the wind. You're going to run. That's the four winds, my people. That's the four winds. Jeremiah 3, 14 through 17 tells you, I'm going to bring you back, one from a city, two from a family. I'll bring you back to Zion. I'm not going to read these all. I'm going to push on. Isaiah 27 and 12, 12 t- t- tells you, I'm going to gather you up one by one. Once again, now, I'm, gonna, um, I'm not going to read them for you. And yeah, I am going to read them. I am going to read them. Give me one sec. I'm going to go to 4th Edris 9, chapter 9, 7 through 9, Edris 13, 46 through 57, and 2nd Baruch 29, 1 through 8. Let's see if the extra books, now I don't use the extra books to, to, to stamp the truth, but they testify to the word that's already written. So if people want to use the extra books, it better be your understanding of them, better be according to it. They cannot negate what is written. And these are certified books. This ain't no Gnostics. This ain't no Zohar. This ain't no scholars. And this ain't a bunch of books that we ain't supposed to be touching and ain't certified for us to teach from to find out what y'all's prophecies or mysteries are about. So how much time do I got? Because I, I don't have no track of time when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm speaking. Yeah, we got like about an hour and 15 minutes if you want to use it. <laughs> okay, ahead. wonderful. All right, I'm doing good then. I'm doing good. All right, bear with me, y'all. I'm long-winded. I speak fast. I might stumble. I mumble. That's right. I don't know good English because I've been traveling the world since I was 19, and so I've been speaking broken English, broken African English, broken Spanish English, broken Brazilian English, and broken Israeli English. So if any of y'all got a problem with my speech or my my sentences and think that I'm not uh, worthy to speak the word of you because I can't read something right or I'll read something backwards. Well, what are you? Because <laughs> people have come to me with that foolishness after seeing my lectures that I'm reading stuff wrong. That's right. I read stuff wrong. I miss words, but you know what I'm saying. Moses had the same problem. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you use that excuse not to hear what I think, to think that I don't know what I'm saying. So I say that to say, excuse me, if because I sometimes I skip words because I'm reading so fast or I'll skip a sentence, but I'm making myself clear on what it is that I'm trying to express. And so you will hear that from time to time. My students always have to correct me because I say things backwards. I'll make up new words and I can't read no acronym right. So let's go to, um, that is not it. Give me a, give me a second. 264. Here we go. Here we are. So I'm in 4th Edris 9, 7 through 9. And it shall be that everyone who shall be saved and shall be able to escape on account of his works or on account of his faith whereby he has believed. So we already know. That faith and works go together. So he's saying that there is a work. Not these people just going around just saying have faith in Yahushua. There's some work that we got to do. There's something we got to do, and it's according to what has been told to us to believe in, to do, and have faith. And that's the faith of Abraham. That's the faith of Daniel. 
That's the faith of Noah. We'll survive the dangers that have been predicted and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. This is not just spiritual, y'all. Stop letting these Christians come from the Hebrew Roots Movement and teach you prophecy that they got from your, not your prophets. The Hebrew Roots Movement is not our movement. This is the Euro-Gentile version of our movement. And a lot of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters are coming out of that movement thinking they are superior and they acknowledge coming back to teach us and, and bring us right back to this false faith this false love, this false Messiah. Those that have not, uh, it says, which I have made Kodesh for me from the beginning. So there is a place, there is, it's within the borders of Israel that he has made holy from the beginning. He set aside. He said, in that day, I, you will see salvation. I'm only going to protect those in my land. When those who have not abused my way shall be in a, a pitiful state. Yep. Even the righteous that has not abused Yah's ways. We mean abused Yah's ways. What, is that? what does that mean? Those that are claiming that they're keeping the covenant of Yah and actually abusing the covenant of Yah by lying about what the covenant really is. And teaching the laws and the statute of Yah in a way that's actually teaching against the laws. And I see a lot of people teaching you commandments. And actually teaching you to break commandments. And they that have rejected and cast them away despitefully with contempt shall dwell in torment. Let's go to Edra 13, 46 through 51. Then dwelt they until the latter times. And now when they shall begin to come, what? Begin to come back in the land. The most high Yahweh shall stay to the springs of the stream again. And they may go through. So we already know that Isaiah talk about when you see the fire, walk through it. If you're not going to burn, what's that? That's the angel of Yah going before us. What kind of faith you got to walk through that fire when it's time to cross over? And when you see the streams go through, you will not drown. That is not in America. He's already said where that's going on. And I, in my Mika code, I show you that Yah said there's going to be a three and a half period that he's going to destroy the land of Moab and scatter them and prepare that place, clear it out for us. And he's doing it. It already started, y'all. Go back and look at my lecture and see if Yah's word is not manifesting. He's not preparing water in the wilderness for us. And when that earthquake hits, when, 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 when the Jordan Valley opens up its mouth, when that earthquake hits here, fires are coming all through the wilderness. Them gas, that's, that's Yah's power manifested from the center of the earth. Now, when it says, therefore, there, therefore saw you the multitude gather together in Shalom. So, yeah, there's a gathering together in, in peace. When? Um, in, in the land. But those that be left behind of your people and they that are found within my borders shall be delivered. Now, when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people. This is the last battle, e Ezekiel. Once we gather together in the place of safety, in the mountains where he told us, we are going to become his standing army. We don't have to pick up a sword. He's going to go before us like the angel of Yah. He's going to manifest and when he brings us back to the mountain and fulfills the fullness of his covenant and transforms us. He's going to give us the power of the angel of Yah. Fire won't touch us. We're going to stand in the fire and we're going to be his army by calling out the power of Yah. That's my next lecture that's coming, y'all. All these people that's telling you it's witchcraft to think that calling on the name of Yah doesn't make a difference. It's not that simple and dry. Yah does judge the heart, but once you know his name, you have no excuse. Your heart got to be purified, and you got the sound is the power. When I teach you the mystery of his name and how you know you're supposed to pronounce it and where the power comes from in calling out his name with a pure heart, how that manifests his fire within and without. This ain't no joke. That's right, I'm a holy namer. To the, to, the, to the fire. I'm a holy namer. I don't believe in no, I don't rock with Christ. I don't rock with Jesus. I don't rock with none of that. I rock with Yehoshua because he's the rock. And then he shall show them very many great wonders. Why y'all not seeing no wonders now? Because your heart ain't right and you defiled and you are in 
iniquity and rebellion because you don't want to come out. When he brings us back into the wilderness, y'all, that's when he's going to give you teachers after his own heart. That's when you're not going to put your teachers in the corner anymore. That's when he's going to give you the, the knowledge and the wisdom from on high. That's when he's going to cause your bones to live again. That's when he's going to show you great and many wonders. Until then, you ain't going to see nothing but trouble. Then I said, oh, sovereign, y'all. So I'm, I'm bringing it down to Baruch. Why am I mad? Do I sound mad to y'all? Y'all's mad. Y'all's mad. I'm tired. I'm tired. Because I don't know how long, how much I have to shout and scream and put myself on the front line to be dagged at, to be lied on, to be used and abused and, and manipulated and call everything but a daughter of Yah when I'm delivering to you his word in truth. I'm tired, but Yah is angry. So Tali is not speaking. Second Baruch 29, 1 through 8. And Yahweh answered and said to me, that which will happen at that time bears upon the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will notice it. For at that time, I shall only protect those found in this land at that time. And it will happen that when all that which should come to pass in these parts have been accomplished, the anointed one will begin to be revealed. That's another mystery because I bring it out. I bring it out that there's a difference between the sign of Yahushua's coming versus the fullness of his coming. And they look the same. They are both are coming. There is, there is a sign of Yahushua's coming, and it's, and it's the sign of his power being manifested through an earthquake, through fire, through destruction. And it's the sign of the anointed one that Matthew is talking about, not the finality of his coming. There are two comings of Yahushua. That's right. I know that sounds crazy. Go back and look if, the, if what I teach from the Torah and from the New Testament don't testify that there are two presences of Yah. Is one is called the presence of the Lamb. What's happening? An earthquake. When Yah um, came the first time, when he came down on the, what happened? An earthquake. He came down in fire, hail, and all of that. And that's what his presence is going to look like again, y'all. These people are teaching you still a black man is quacking out the sky. No, it's not. Yahushua was on that mountain. And he didn't see no black man. He didn't see a man. And he didn't see an invisible fireman. He saw a pillar of fire. And he heard a voice. Y'all didn't see a man. And Yahushua was there with the angel of Yah. He was inside the angel of Yah. Who's the angel of Yah? Huh. All right, let's move on. I'm getting through this, y'all. I'm getting through this. I skipped so many scriptures. Let's see. Where do I want to go? Hoshea. I, read, I believe I read this, but I want to read it again. Hoshea 12, 8 through 10. 8 through 10. Give me a sec. Oh, uh, Talia called this drop. Sister Talia called this drop. Uh, that happens, being that she's in Israel, every two hours, you know, the phone lines over there drop. So as soon as she calls back in, we're going to bring her back. But uh, for those who have any questions, you know that number, 319-527-6239. Or if you order on the phone line, just simply press number one and stand by patiently. We'll get to you. Uh, I already see one caller pressing number one. So we'll get to you when, uh, you know, when she comes back on. Again, today's show is entitled Prophetic Warning Part 2, y'all. It's Prophetic Warning Part 2. Remnant into the wilderness. If you missed part one, all you got to do is go to the YouTube page. Go check it out www.youtube.com forward slash the Bay Talk for you. You can check it out on the Blog Talk Radio, of course. And uh, check it out. Check out part one. We're just waiting for uh, Talia to call back in. Her phone line, you know, dropped. So as soon as she calls back in, we're going to get this show started. Uh, just to let you guys know, we have a show on the Wednesday, the Man Up segment. Make sure you check us out, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, hosted by Brother B.A. You know, the Man Up segment is right here on the Bates of You. And then we have uh, the Christianity on Trial that's going down, uh, actually, uh, this Friday, Christianity on Trial. Uh, Defenders of the Faith, two teams, Team Hebrew versus Team Christian. All right, I believe she is back. Hold on, let's open up the phone line. All right, that's I know. I know every two hours I get How, how long was I missing? I was going on. How long? Where did I? Where did y'all lose me? 
Uh, I don't even know because I, I was like promoting the show on social media, so I, I don't know. <laughs> you right. How that. long was I but going? Then, a minute, two minutes? Yeah, about two minutes. Yep. Okay, continue. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe that I finished off. Can, is there a caller that's coming in? Maybe they can help me uh, reestablish where I got cut off. All right, hold on. Hold on, let me see. Uh, three, two, three, you there still? Three, two, three. Three, two, three. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, did you uh hear where uh, Talia left off at? Because I was promoting the show. I can hear. Did you hear that part? Or no? No, she was she was going off into the in, into the last day stuff. That's where she left off at. I was I was I was in Baruch and Ezra. Okay. Where did I get cut off, brother? Do you recall? You get off. I, I think you, uh, you, you 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 were speaking of when it talks about them um coming back. The, I think the ten tribes. That's where he kind of got cut off at. Okay. Um, you don't know what book I was reading from? You you you, you was in Second Ezra. You were speaking of them coming okay, back. Okay, gotcha. All right. Second Ezra. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. What Appreciate was your it. question? And I'll go back to what I was reading. Um, from Ezra and Barbu. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a question, Amanda? Question, Amanda. Yeah. Oh hello, yeah, yeah. My 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 question that I didn't get out the last one was uh, dealing with the, uh, the the three and a half years in um, in Revelations. Uh huh. What's your question? Um, in the uh, in the three and a half years, according to the math, according to the math that's there, um, how hmm. many how, how many uh, days are are the months in that three and a half years that's there in the uh, in the math in Revelations? You asked me that question and I answered it. You didn't get my answer, brother. No, I didn't get to. I I, I didn't get to ask it. I, you you answered that question. I must have missed it. Then. Yes, you tell me again. You, you quoted the whole thing for me. It says uh, then it talks about forty two months. I said it's not in front of me right now, but I'm gonna say yes. That is about forty two months. But you have to reconcile also Daniel's numbers, and there is a mystery in the timeline in the calendar why we got these numbers that are very close to Revelations, but yet. 15 or 45 days off. It has something to do with the two calendars of what the beast is going to fulfill according to his calendar versus the true calendar. They are going to be off. And those that keep the true calendar will be ahead of time from when the world is trying to fulfill prophecy. That's how the elect is going to know God is going to give us the season when it's time to flee. And the beast won't know it because most of us keep his calendar. And he's going to find us on his calendar. He knows where we will gather on his feast days. So I'm giving you, brother, not numbers now. I already told you. It is not as simple as reading one scripture. This takes charts and maps and to show you mathematics. And so I will give that lecture. You're just going to have to be patient. Perhaps you are not prepared to receive it because I'm giving you something that's more important than you knowing a number. What I'm giving you is what you need to know now. Now, Mister, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you, I, I, I don't think you, I don't think you understand my question. You're asking I, 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 me I, I, the three and a half years. Is that not forty-two months? No, I didn't ask that. That's not what I, I asked. Again, how long is each month in 42 months is what I'm asking you. You, just, you did ask that, brother, and I said yes. You said according to the calendar that you believe, it's 30, 30, 31. Okay. According to Enoch's calendar. Okay. In, 91 in, days every season, 364 days a year, 72 weeks, 52 weeks in a year. Okay, you can you you can you cannot get twelve hours get, in the day, twelve hours at night. All you that cannot is determined get, sister, by the sun. Sister, you 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 cannot get any month that's thirty one days in forty two months that's broken down as three and a half years and one thousand two hundred and sixty days. Each month I would have to be thirty days. Not, not there isn't a month in that's there. Right. That and can be 31. 
It, that's it was, why was, you go wrong. That's exactly what Enoch told you. You're going to go wrong because they don't take account for his new uh, Rosh Kodesh. You're not taking account. There's no such calendar in this world. That's 360 days. There's no calendar in this world that is 360 days. That's how, real, brother. How can you, how, how can you get brother, to I'm not going to argue with you. Brother, 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 right. brother, brother, brother. Listen, right. you're doing too much. You're doing too much. I, you're a debater. I'm not. That's it. All right, I'm not going to go All back right, and forth. I'm going to show you I how when y'all tells me to show, mm-hmm. show how. Mm-hmm. And that is yeah, not the kind know. of, the, the calendar cannot be mm-hmm. done on a, on a forum like this. That's what everybody's doing. You know you got to have charts. You got to show the, you got to show the Hebrew. You got to show the English. You got to show the distinctions. Mm-hmm. And you got to rectify Daniel's timeline. It's not that black and white. Daniel already said for a time, times and a half, right, that Israel mm-hmm. will be trodden down. But it also tells it doesn't give you the same number in Revelation. It's slightly different. Why? I can't explain that to you right now so you have understanding because you may be just a little bit blind, brother. I tell you, that's you to let can't you know. That because in Daniel, it tells you that it's different. Well, yeah. It tells you, you that it? it's different. Anybody can hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? I hear you. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. let you know. You got two more callers standing by, but whenever you're ready, you, you want to wait till late, you can take them now. I'll let them in. You. I'll let them in. But listen, right. callers, mm-hmm. my lesson is very specific. I'm not here to prove in our calendar, but I spoke on it to let you know that it's important. It's important. And I'm letting you know that y'all's prophecies are going to fulfill itself on his calendar for the righteous. That's what's important. But I'm not here to argue the last three and a half years because only the righteous are going to know that. We're going to be in the wilderness chilling for whatever that is, whether it's 42 months, 360 days, 364 days. Take into account the three and a half days that the two witnesses are going to die with that 1,920. Or did I say that backwards? 1,290. I can't do nothing right in my head. Math in my head ain't, ain't working. <laughs> So, once again, that's not what's important. Get to the 1,335th day, and you're going to understand the other 1,290. I'm trying to get you to to the 1,000. Blessed is the man that arrives to the 1,335th day. You don't have to be concerned right now for the three and a half years of us in the wilderness. Why? Because that's something that the two witnesses is going to fulfill. Don't worry about it. I'm giving you what you need to know now. Where are you now in time is what's important. How much time do you know that you have before you got to get out of Babylon? I'm going to read it because Jeremiah tells you how much time. But let's get to the callers. All right. We're going to the phone line. Numbers 319-527-6239. We have like 51 minutes on the air, so we still got time. Okay. Let's go to 716-833 alive. Thank you for taking my call, Sal. And I would like to um, say good evening to my sister. Um, good evening, sister. Now, I heard you say that um, you do believe in the New Testament also, right? I believe in the Renewed Testament that will be renewed okay. again. Okay, yes. I, I, I can swing with that word, too. So um, uh-huh. I was just calling in to, to say I, I'm not mad at you. I know that you basically only used all Old Testament and I'm not mad at you about that because when Christ walked the earth, there was no New Testament written, okay? In some of those instances that you had referred to, the only mm-hmm. way you could find them out is in the New Testament. Now, what you mm-hmm. said is true. I would implore anybody that's listening to what this young woman just told everyone, don't look at the fact that she is a woman. What I like about you is what you said is that there is no way that you can give somebody a one-word answer. You know what I mean? It it takes time. It's a whole lesson because the Bible speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you, sis. Thank you, sister. 
I will say again, though, I employ everyone to go to my web. You can see that I'm, a, I'm, not a, I'm not here to give no little lesson. This is just, this is a quick warning. And in this quick warning, you're getting a lesson like you ain't never got. And I'm not bragging, but I'm boasting in Yah. How about that? I'm boasting in the wisdom that he gave me to submit myself to. He's going to reveal the truth to the ones that's willing to do it. And, 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 I, it, yeah, and I would I implore I him to look at what you had said regarding um, what's in Daniel and what's in Revelation. You know what I mean? There's twists and turns, but if you don't search the scriptures yeah. and if you don't mm-hmm. read the whole chapter, if you don't study the Bible, you will not know it. Right. And that's why sometimes he's using, in, in Revelations, and like I said, I can't go through it all now. There's a reason why he's changing the terms from giving you a, an exact number to now 42 months to a time, times and a half. There's a reason but you're why not he's in changing agreement. The you're not in agreement with the seven, right? The seven years? Yeah, you're not in agreement with that, right? Yes, I'm in agreement with the seven years, but how they're dividing it, I believe that they, they that's where they're having a misunderstanding between Daniel's numbers. First of all, we got to stop listening to these Christians tell us what Revelations and Daniel's are about. They don't understand anything. It's about us. It's about what's going down with us. And it's not just about what's going down with the whole world. Now, this lesson I do, I, I, I said it last time. I have about six, five lectures up. They're all like 10 hours, nine hours. I do do New Testament. I do touch revelations, and I'm showing you something that should get you to humble yourself and realize that y'all didn't really understand revelation. I don't go all through it because revelations is a lesson all by itself. Revelations is the revelations of all the prophets. So how much can I give you when, it, when you got a, a thousand uh, books, a thousand pages of prophecy to try to dispense to y'all? Well, I yeah, and, do that so I and you did it on, in certain methods. You'll see. And you, you, hit on the, new oh. you, you hit on another key point, which was key with everything that you said when you talked about Abraham and the dividing of those carcasses. You, this was a That's beautiful right. lesson, sis. Beautiful. Thank you very much. He already predicted what was going to happen at the end of the four hundred years. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not so much. Years. People think that it is according to the Passover today. No, it is according to Genesis 15, the dividing of those carcasses, what he told Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're going to see it. Y'all going to see it. And the ones of us over here, we got to run. Yahushua said, when you see this happen, when you see a siege against Jerusalem, y'all have been taught that a third temple, y'all going to be waiting, and the end is going to come for a third temple to be built. Uh, uh, some man to come and say, I'm the, to say, I'm your host for Jesus in the flesh, and the mark of the beast, which is some chips set up. Y'all let these Christians give y'all a half, half-baked understanding that they playing on, so y'all don't even know what time y'all in. But that's not fair, sis, because I have to reveal that I'm a Christian. You know what I mean? But I'm the type of I, Christian who reads and studies for myself because I know that the mm-hmm. pastor can't save me, the elder can't save me, can't I, nobody I'm, I'm, save me. But the word. So I'm speaking in general, and so my yes. statement stands true. The ones that are, mm-hmm. are dispensing this timeline prophecy is coming mm-hmm. from, I told you, prophetical Euro Gentile Christians. I would, I would, Black I would implore some. I would implore them to read, keep reading Daniel until you understand it, and then go to Revelation. That's it. <laughs> uh, you got to repent first. Pray to Yah. Confess your sins, confess your, confess your father's sins, fast and pray, and then he'll reveal something to you. That's right. He's not going to reveal nothing to the wicked. I don't care how much knowledge they think they've got. They can read it a thousand times. It was sealed to Daniel. <laughs> and he's going to reveal it to his prophets. He's not revealing it to um, um, teachers. The teachers are going to get it from the prophets. That's point blank. That's, just, that's what it is. That's what it is. Stop listening to these Christian these Christian evangels are getting their interpretation right. of prophecy from the Jews here. They're feeding it right. to them to feed it back to the people so they can emulate prophecy. And there's something going on in Revelations that our brothers don't see. There's an emulation of prophecy that is prophesied to happen and the real prophecy that is happening. And they're happening coinciding. That's why we got these two numbers that are not quite the same within Daniel and within Revelation. 
It's a mystery. It's a mystery. So do we have another caller? I appreciate your comment. Hey, hold on. Oh, okay, but I'll get your website at the end. You're going to do it on your last I'll give it to you right words. Now. Okay, uh, okay. You can go to the to my to my YouTube. That's where the lessons are, and I will be giving more lessons. You know, you can see that I put a lot of time and effort into putting these lessons together. Uh, it took me years before Yah would allow me to get on the YouTube and even dispense that knowledge like that. I've been teaching this stuff for years. But it was time now, as I waited on Yah, and he put me in the right spirit of not having fear to be challenged, to be talked about, because that the role of a prophet is also to judge and to call out judgment. And so that makes you the bad guy. People love me for my knowledge, but when, I, when it's time to judge, that's when they want to hate you. Mm-hmm. And so I had to be ready to be a warrior for Yah to be able to take it, to take a sacrifice for the truth. Because if you kill me today, or you stole me with, 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 with a word, these words are not going to fail. Anyway, they're going out and they're going to accomplish. So there will be no stone in the Talia until his word accomplishes itself. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can keep fighting. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, sister. Next, uh, is that it? Okay, but don't forget to give. You just said YouTube, but you didn't give me the rest. Oh, but I'll get it at the end of the show. No, no. Go to go to all my lessons. Every I haven't updated my website. Um, I have contact information there. But go to Talia Levy one. Uh, all Spell my it. lectures. That's really T A L I A, L E V I one. I'm sure Sha will post it up underneath his um uh, his description. Oh, okay, box. great. Okay, thank you. And, and that'll lead, uh, when you go there, that'll lead you to my website. Follow the crumb trail. <laughs> I appreciate you, the Sister call. Lee. I appreciate you. Uh, we've got one more person standing by. Let's go to 240-535. You're live. 240-535. Can you hear me? 240. Uh, 240-535. Hi, hi, can you hear me? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm as good as I can okay. be. I'm... I didn't have a question. You just were talking about your place, and it was uh, Hosea going to repeat. You said you were going to repeat that over. Ho- Hosea? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to repeat. I'm going to go back to fourth address. That, uh, that's where I understand I got cut off at. I'm going to repeat that as, fin- as soon as the question's finished. I don't have a question. You can cut me off. This is Sister Liz. <laughs> I don't have a question. I just wanted to tell you where we were. Okay, right, thank you so much. <laughs> right, thank much you. love. Right, you, I appreciate the call. You can continue. Nobody else is pressing number one at this time. Thanks. All right, let's go back to uh, Fourth Edris, Chapter 9, 7 through 9, which attests to what all the prophets have already said. So I don't use the extra books to, co- to discover truth. The, the extra books, though they are sanctioned, you still got to read them, how do I say, just like the Bible. They have been twisted. They have been turned. They have been transliterated. And so that's why y'all teaches us because we're reading in this English and things have been removed, changed, misunderstood. And so they all must testify to each other. And you must, um, you must find, they must speak the same word. How do you know something has been twisted or turned from one scripture to another Bible? or uh, from one book to another prophet, or from the New Testament to the Old. They cannot contradict. Just like I was saying to the brother, if there's something written in the New Testament that is saying that Pesach is a high Shabbat, then somebody lied because it's not. It's not a Shabbat. It's not a Shabbat tone. Somebody's twisting words to get you not to see the calendar that Messiah manifested on the real day. And I, re- and I go through the New Testament to show you how they do contradict each other, but the truth is still in there. Okay, so I'm going to read from 4th Edges 9, 7 through 9, as a witness to the prophets. And it shall be that everyone who shall be saved shall a- be able to escape on account of works and on account of faith, whereby he has believed. Believed in what? In the works that he was told to do and the faith of Yahushua and the commandments of what he told us to do by his prophets. Works and faith. All of this sitting still and just have faith in Yahushua is a lie. 
will survive the dangers that have been predicted and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, which I have made Chodesh, what I have made holy for me from the beginning. So he has made this land holy. He has separated a part of this land within the borders reserved for the righteous. We are connected to this land, and only this land is going to protect us. You, you don't need to wait to the 1,900. You don't need to wait to the 1,335. Blessed is the man that escaped before the raft. That is wisdom. You don't wait to see the trouble and say, I got two more days. I got 42 more months, or I got one more month. That's not what y'all is telling us. He's saying, get out now. Your behind should have left 40, 70 years ago. <laughs> you know, so it says, then those who have now abused my way shall be in a pitiful state. And they that have rejected and cast them away despitefully with contempt shall dwell in torment. Edras 13, 46 through 51. Then dwelt they until, until the latter time. So he's saying, I, I didn't, I'm not reading all the prophecy. I'm just picking out this point. But he's talking about our gathering into the wilderness, that we're going to dwell in safety until the latter times. And now when they shall... Begin to come, what? Come into that place of safety. The Most High Yahweh shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through. This is the prophecy in Isaiah when he says that I'm going to split the, the waters in seven streams again. And we're going to walk across dry, short, dry land on foot. This is not us walking across the Atlantic Ocean from America through to Africa to Israel. He says this is happening in the wadis of Egypt that he's going to branch off. And so he says, when I build that highway, the highway to righteousness, this is the path with repentance. With, with repentance, it is a call to return with true repentance. And that path, that highway, he's saying is going to be marked by seven streams that he's going to split the Red Sea and we're going to walk across. He tells us that we're coming from the wadis of Egypt. From over the fords of the of Philistine, which is some of us is coming over Israel, and that some of us is walking down, coming, coming, coming um, through the Red Sea, which is Ethiopia, Eritrea, Africa. Some of us is coming from 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 within Arabia already, and some of us is coming up from further north through Jordan. We're gonna gather in the borders, and that's where we're gonna be safe. Get in the real borders of Israel. Don't wait till time tells you it's time to go. Prepare to meet your maker. Long to see his face. Go where he goes. And those that walk in the spirit of Yahushua will follow him wherever he goes. Am I telling you to go to the wilderness for a man? No. That's what false prophets are going to tell you. Come, there's a man in the wilderness. There's a man in the desert. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you to come to see a man. Now, it says, but those that be left behind of your people... Are they that are found within my borders? Those that shall be left behind, that's, that word left behind is still remnant. Those of the remnant will be found in my borders shall be delivered. Now, when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he will defend his people that remain, the, the, the remnant. So this is now going to the last war in Ezekiel. And then he shall show them very many great wonders. There will be no wonders Proven or shown to you until you come out into the wilderness. No mighty wonders of the Holy Spirit is going to manifest until you come out to the wilderness. Because he doesn't need to do a mighty wonder for you to get a ticket, get on a plane, and fly across the waters and land in your borders. Why would he do a mighty miracle when he has put it in your power through obedience to get on a plane? Let's read 2 Baruch 29, 1 through 8. And Yahweh answered and said to me, that which will happen that time bears upon the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will notice it. For at that time, I shall only protect those that are found in this land at that time. And it will happen when all that which should come to pass in these parts had been accomplished. The anointed one will begin to be revealed. This is another mystery that I go through in Matthews talking about that there is a sign of the Son of Man. And I know y'all read that. It ain't, ain't. Y'all just read right by it. And I know it causes pause and y'all be like, wait a minute. The sign of the Son of Man? What's the difference? There's a difference. 
there's the sign of the coming of the Son of Man, and then there's the fulfillment of the, of the coming of man. And they look the same. There is two presidents of Yah's presence. And one is at the sixth, seventh seal that is called the present, the wrath of the land. That is a presence. He's coming. How's he coming? As a man cracking out the sky? No. He's coming as fire, earthquake, nuclear power, hail, storm. When he came before in his original essence, that's what it looked like. You didn't see a black man in the fire. You didn't see a visible man in that fire when he first came to meet us face to face. What you saw was fire on a mountain, a pillar of smoke. And he's going to do it again, y'all. Y'all going to stand in that fire. Y'all going to go in that mountain. Because that was the first intent. That was the first intent. Let me go to 2nd Baruch 29, 1 through 8. I'm, I'm in 5. And the earth and the earth will also yield fruit 10,000 fold. And on one vine will be 1,000 branches. And one branch will produce 1,000 clusters. And one cluster will produce 1,000 grapes. And one grapes will produce a core of wine. What's the wine? That's the Holy Spirit and the fruits manifesting to us to be the, 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 the when we go through the wine press, we become the wine. We become what? Sealed with the blood of Messiah. We take on his seed, which is the first fruit, which is the first knowledge, which is the tree of life. And those that are hungry will enjoy themselves and they will, uh, they, and they will. Moreover, see marvels every day. When we are in the land, y'all, that's when you're going to see the marvels of Yah. For winds will go out in front of me every morning to bring the fragrance of aromatic fruits and clouds at the end of the day to distill the dew of hell. This is talking about the fruits of the garden of the, of the, of, of, that was offered to us in the garden and the dew of life, the waters of life. This is the fulfillment of, of the Holy Spirit, the latter rain that he's promising us. Not the early rain, the latter rain. And it will happen at that time that the treasure of manna will come down again from on high, and they will eat of it in those years because they, these are they who will have arrived at the consummation of time. More testimony that he's only going to protect his people within his borders. That is clear through all the prophets. I'm going to say it again. Those of y'all and you have time to repent. Those of y'all that are teaching people that you are safe in America because Yah is with you and nothing is going to touch you if you have the faith of Yahushua is a lie. He's calling this an iniquity. You're sitting still, and he's calling it arrogance. This is the drunken wine that all our leaders are drunk with because they error in the vision. This is clear. This is clear. So I'm going to finish off. I'm going to finish off with Ezekiel 38. Y'all know this, but that seals the deal. That seals the deal. Ezekiel 38. No, no, no. I'm going to do Ezekiel 38, and there's something in Jeremiah. No, I'm going to go to, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 50 first. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 50. I'm not going to read all 50 and 51. This is dual prophecy, but it leads you to very distinct things about the end. It is something that I want to draw out, something I want to draw out. I go through all the 50, 50 and 51 in my lecture very distinctly, but I'm not going to do that all here tonight. I don't have the time. Give me one second. Where am I going? In Je- Where do I want to go? Give me one second. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what? I want to. I think I want to read it. How much time do I got, Sal? You got thirty minutes. We're good. Mm-hmm. All right. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Let's see. Where do I want to start off? Uh, I want to read it all, but I think it's just something. Uh, Go ahead. Read it all. I don't have to. <laughs> Go ahead. It's up to you. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so we all we do. I want to read all of Jeremiah. There's so much in here. I mean, y'all know. Yes, I do want to read it because it also verifies very distinct things that I'm pointing out through all the prophets. So we just gonna do it. I'm gonna read it fast. I'm gonna read it fast, y'all. Sorry about that. Jeremiah 50. The word which Yahweh spoke concerning Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans, through Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the Gentiles and publish and set a standard amongst who? The Gentiles, the goy, not the nations. 
the Goy, the Gentiles, publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Belt is confounded, Meridon is dried up, her idols, her images are broken in pieces. For come against her a nation from the north, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it. And from man to beast shall be driven away, uh, away and go. And those days at that time, declares Yahweh, the sons of Israel will come and the sons of Judah together. So we know this is about our return, our final return. They will go crying as they go, weeping. That's right. We're supposed to weep. We're supposed to be crying um, and doing a real fast for Yah, pouring out our souls. They will go crying as they go, and it will be Yahweh, the Elohim, they will see. They will ask for the way to Zion. Those of y'all that wait, wait last minute, y'all going to be asking, what's the way to Zion? It's not Jerusalem here. Where's the way to Zion? Turns, turning their faces, they will come that they may join themselves to Yahweh in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. That hasn't happened yet. He's going to do it in the, um, in, in the wilderness. My people, I'm in six, my people have become lost or corrupted sheep. Their shepherds have led them in error. The mountains, the backsliding apostles, we also call the mountains. From the mountains to the hill, they have forgotten their resting place. All who found them have eaten them, and their enemies have said, we are not guilty. This hasn't happened yet, y'all. There's going to be a slaughter of Israel, and y'all have, y'all are rising up to create a rebellion, to give them a reason um, to look like lazy, angry black people that just want to revolt. And you're going to give them, because um, they have the power of uh, propaganda to paint you as, as wild monkeys. And they are doing that across the oceans of how they're looking at black Americans right now to give them the excuse to do this, to say, we're not guilty. For they have sinned against Yahweh, their abode of righteousness, Yahweh, to uh, the hope of their fathers. Flee from inside of Babylon and go out, leave the land of the Chaldeans and be as male goats before the flock. Did Yah ever, in the time of Jeremiah, ask us to flee out of of Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar? Never. He told us to accept it, make peace, find favor, chill out until Cyrus comes. There was no fleeing from Babylon at that day. So I know brothers are still saying, this ain't Babylon uh, today. This is that ba-. No, it's not. I am stirring up, raising an assembly, a great nation from the north. They will arrange them, um, themselves against her and she will be captured. Their mighty expert arrows will, they will not, we know this is talking about nuclear missiles. Who has declared that they got nuclear missiles like that, that will not miss? America can't say that. Russia has declared that they got missiles that are not ballistic missiles that nobody has a defense system against, and they will not miss. And he's selling these missiles, this, this, this technology, to the nations that are going to join him against America, to Turkey, to Iraq, to all of these countries that you're going to see join in a league against America and all who support America when this war goes down. Y'all heard the song. Y'all don't know when, when, when you hear the battle cry. When, when, when war is announced, it happens with a song. Did not Russia sing that song to y'all? How he's going to take America down? Did you not hear him talk about the lazy Negroes in, in between? The toys of America. You think this is a guess? He knows who we are. They know who we are. They know that they are destined to take the kingdom, and they know that we the children of the kingdom. I, so he said, Chaldean will become plunder. And all who plunder her will have enough, declares Yah, because you are glad and you rejoice, O you who plundered my heritage. So this also, this coming against Babylon is also a plundering of Yah's heritage. Who's Yah's heritage? That's us and Babylon, because you skip around like heifers as grass and nigh bellows like stallions, like big conquering warriors. Your mother will be greatly ashamed. She who, who gave you birth will be humiliated because she will be the last after part of the nation's a wilderness, a parched land of the desert. So this is America coming within because what they did to us, and they're going to do it again. Before America goes down, there will be civil war. There will be a race war. There will be anarchy. And in that, they're going to take us down. That's when y'all going to wake up and see it's time to go. It says, I'm in 13, because the wrath of Yahweh, she will not, not be inhabited. So this raft of Yah is called a raft. 
you will not be, this place will not be inhabitable, but she will be completely desolate. Everyone who passes by Babylon will be horrified and with hiss because all of all of her wounded or her slaughtered. Draw up your battle lines against Babylon around her. All you who bend the bow, shoot at her. Do not spare your arrows, for she has sinned against Yahweh. Raise your battle cry against her around, around her. her. Your battle cry. They have called the battle cry. When you see them sing a song, it's on. Excuse me. Her hands fall, her foundations have fallen, her walls have been torn down, for this is the vengeance of Yahweh. That's right. And I've already showed you that when Babylon goes down, this is a vengeance of Yahweh. This is a wrath of Yahweh, but it's, it's another wrath to come on the whole world, not just Babylon. Take vengeance on her. This is called the day of vengeance. As she has done to others, so do to her. So this is not just about what she did to Israel. It's what she has done to the whole world. Cut off the sower from Babylon and him that wields the sickle in the time of harvest, of the time of first fruit. It's telling you what is going to happen, y'all. Can I not show you any clear? Cut her off in the time of the sower when she wields the sickle in the time of first fruits because of the sword of maltreatment or oppression. Every man to his people, and they shall flee and escape every man to his own land. Israel is scattered, hunted flock, because that's what's going to happen to us. They're going to um, they're going to come and rescue every man from France, from whatever they come to come get their people to come back and repatriate to their countries. But ain't nobody coming from you, Black America. Africa is not coming for you. They not sending no ships back for you to dock you in Africa. Do not get on those ships. Ain't no shifts at all she's coming. They know that you believe in that prophecy, and so they're, they're setting it up for you, for you to think that that's your escape. That's some FEMA boats. Don't you get in it. Therefore, with Israel is scattered a hunted flock. The lions have driven them away. The first, that first, that ate them, king of Assyria, and the last his bones, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Therefore, thus it. The, the, the king, the Nebuchadnezzar completely and Assyria completely destroy us like this? No, it didn't. This is giving similitude of the nation. It is Assyria and, Nebuch- and Babylon together. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon in his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel back to his pasture, and he will graze on Carmel and Bashan, and he shall, and his desire will be satisfied in the hill country of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days at that time, declares Yahweh, search will be made for the iniquity. This is when the iniquity is, 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 is recompensed, completed in the house of Israel. But there will be none. And for the sins of Judah, but there will be none found. For I will pardon those who, whom I leave as a remnant against the land of Merathiam. The word Marathia means against the land of a double rebellion. Go up against the, who's the double rebellion? The ones that's going to get double payback. That's, that's, that's Israel in the land of Babylon that's going to get double payback. And against the inhabitants of Picard. Picard is a people that was south of Babylon. It was the territory of the Babylonian army. So he's saying when this army comes against her, the first thing that he's coming against, is its army's defense system. That's why all these EPMs is going out like that. That's why they're doing these EPMs. And all of those people that um, scoffed, when, when, even though it was out of order and out of understanding what that EPM was about, scoffed at Israel, made videos condemning the ones that's telling people that we should have fear and perhaps get out of this land and, 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 and think because that was an EPM that didn't mean and, and, and now went upon themselves to go prophesize to people to tell them they don't have to go nowhere. Them EPMs is for a reason, and it's double reason. It's double reason. The sound of the battle is in the land, and great destruction, how the hammer of the whole earth has been cut off and broken. So I already told you that America is the hammer of the earth. It is keeping the order of the world right now. When America goes down, which is going to happen in the time of the feast, that is the end. That's summer. That's kites. That's the harvest. That is Shavuot. That is summer. That's the end. That's when it's going to happen. You got 50 days to get out. 
The whole hammer of the world is going down. The internet, communications, there will be darkness on the earth, and if you don't count your 50 days, you ain't going to know how much time you've got to get in your borders. I have laid a snare for thee, and you are taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware, for thou art found and are also caught before thou hast striven against Yahweh. Yahweh has opened up his armory, and he has brought forth the weapons of his indignation, for this is the work of Yahweh Elohim of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Yah is doing this. He has anointed Russia. He's anointed them to give them the power of this destruction, and nuclear power is the power of Yahweh, harnessed it by man. Coming out of her from the farthest Borders coming coming to her from the farthest borders or the end. So this North country, there's a lot of people say this can't be. This is not America because north of America is Canada. Y'all don't know Baba geography. Go and take a map. If you believe in flat earth, this ain't going to work for you. Okay? Not talking to you. All right? Go and take a globe. Go look at the borders of America on the longitude line. Go Far north to the other end of the earth on those longitude lines and see what country sits in that. I believe it's, what, 60 to 120 is the borders of America. Go north across the globe all the way to the other end of the earth and see what country sits north to the other end. That is Russia and China. Upon, uh, upon open up her bonds, pile up her heaps and utter, utterly destroy her. Let nothing be left. This ain't no joke. Dry up all her young bulls. Let them go down in the slaughter. Woe upon them, for the day is come, the time of their punishment. The sound of those who flee and refugees or fugitives from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the visions of Yahweh Elohim. So the righteous would have come out before this is happening. Because guess who's calling the judgment out? The righteous. And we're going to know what time to call it out. Because we're going to know the time. And we're going to be out. The righteous is going to cut Call out Yah's judgment on behalf of him once we get out. He's going to say to Yah, take it down now. The sound of those who, so this is the refugees that have escaped. That's us, the fugitives, the clan Zion, the vengeance of Yahweh Elohim, vengeance for his temple, for his place. Announce against Babylon all those who bend the bow and camp against her on every side. Let there be no escape. Repay her according to her works, according to all that she has done, so do to her. For she has become arrogant, proud, I told you, that's that arrogance, against Yahweh and against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, her young men will fall in the streets, and all her women of war, or her men of war will be cut off or killed in the day, declares Yahweh. Behold, I am against you, O arrogant, proud one, declares Yahweh of hosts, for your day has come. The time will I the time when I will punish you or visit you. The arrogant one will stumble and fall with no one to rise up, and I will set fire to his cities, and it will devour all his environments. It's going to destroy all of is of America. There will be no safe place. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the sons of Israel are oppressed, and the sons of Judah as well, and they all and all who took them captive have held them strong. They refuse to send them away. So, yes, Babylon has created a, a, a legal system to keep us in oppression and refuse. Because when you let go of a slave, you're supposed to send them back. No, they didn't do that. But there's no reason that you can't leave either. Their redeemer is strong. Yahweh of hosts is his name, pleading. He will plead their cause that he may give rest to the earth but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. O sword against the Chaldeans, declared Yahweh, and against the inhabitants of Babylon, and against her officials and princes and her wise men. A sword against her liar, a lair. They will, co- they will become fools. A sword against her warriors. They will be shattered or dismayed. A sword against their horses and against their chariots and against their uh, foreigners, the mixed people who are inside of her. That's not wrong, y'all. And they will become as women, a sword against her treasures, and they will be plundered. A drought against her waters, so there's gonna have, there's gonna be problems with the waters during this time. They will become dried up, for it is the land of the graven images. She is and is and in terror, dread. She will shine. Therefore, wild beasts shall dwell within with hyenas in Babylon. In branches of owls shall dwell in her. She shall never again have people, nor be inhabited for all generations. This is not talking about ancient Babylon. 
And when Elohim, oh, as when Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. That's how we know. With its neighbors, declares Yahweh, no man will live there. No, and no will any son of man reside. So he's making it clear this is a complete desolation. Look, peoples are coming from the north, a great nation, and many kings will be stirred up from the extreme parts of the earth. So there is going to be nations that join her against, uh, uh, with, with this uh, north nation. They seize their bow and javelin. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea and ride on horses, arrayed like man with the battle against, oh, daughter of Babylon. So it goes to tell you it's the last strength of her. It's the daughter of Babylon, the last nation of her. The king of Babylon has heard the report of them, and his hand shall, shall fall feeble against uh, uh, anguish took hold of him and pains of a woman in travail. Behold, Look, a lion from a swelling of Jordan River upon the abode of the strong. But I will make them suddenly run at, from her. And who is the man that I may appoint over her? There is one man who has been anointed to destroy Babylon. He has the B title of Cyrus. He is the last king of Iran, of Persia, and that is Russia. He is the military arm and the strength of Iran right now. That is Russia, and it's one man, y'all, one man that's going to do this, that I may appoint over her. For who is like me, and who will appoint me to, to the time? And who is this shepherd? He's called a shepherd that will stand before me. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh, which he has devised or intended against Babylon, and his purposes, which he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. If not, he will drag them out. Who is he talking about? He's talking about us. So if you don't come out, if not, he's going to drag you out. The younger ones of the flock, he will not desolate on the abode or the pasture of them. So you old, old elders that is stuck in your comfortability because you have your retirement funds, you got your property in your houses, you don't got your riches off of the civil rights movement, you don't want to go nowhere. But you have left nothing for the, for the generation. You have left nothing for us. You greedy elders, because you could have fulfilled the prophecy for us if you would have took your riches and stopped trying to be like the whore and prepare to return where Yahweh had told you to return 70 years ago, 60 years ago, 50 years ago. Then the young flock wouldn't have to run with nothing. But it's going to be the young flock this time to do it. Why? Because we have nothing to lose. And it's going to be the poor and the meek of us. Because some of y'all young ones are just like the elders, rich. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh. He has devised or intended against Babylon, and he purposed it. He purposed it against the land. I just read that. So he's going to take the young ones because y'all older ones don't want to lead us the way we're supposed to go. And at the sound of the capture of Babylon will shake the whole earth and her cry shall be heard among the nations. There is an earthquake that will be triggered when the nuclear uh, missiles hit America. That is at the sixth and the seventh seal. It is called the day of vengeance. It is called the wrath. It, it is called also where Israel gets destroyed. So let's go now to 51 because there's some details in 51 that I'm going to tell you now what to look for. Thus says Yahweh, I'm in Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus says Yahweh, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in her heart that rise up against me, a destroying wind, a destroying spirit. I will send unto Babylon fanners that will fan her and shall empty her land. For in the days of trouble, they shall be against her round about, against him that bend like the archer bends his bow, and against him that lifted himself up in the ar ar armor. And spare ye not young, not her young men. Destroy her utterly, all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldeans, and they that are thirst through in the street, um, thrust through in her streets. For Israel has not for been forsaken, nor Judah of his Eloe, Elohe of Yahweh Zebaot. Because the land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. This is the Babylon that is filled with sin. Her sins have reached to heaven. Yah is coming down. So therefore, 
So those of y'all that are still teaching, this is some spiritual coming out. How dare you be that ignorant and claim to be wise? When it just tells you all the reasons why, because there's a wall coming inside of her, and it's a complete destruction like Sodom and Gomorrah. So now he's talking to you, O Israel, flee from inside of Babylon. There was no commandment to flee from Babylon of old, ever. Cyrus came and destroyed Babylon, and we was waiting for Cyrus, and we was happy to see him, and he freely let us go. Deliver, slip away every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, her punishment, for this is the time of Yah's vengeance. Yahweh will deal to her. This will he pay her or recompense her. Babylon has been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken, and the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, all the nations boast. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her. Perhaps she may have been healed. Why is he saying that perhaps she may have been healed? Y'all don't know that there's a world treaty understanding that when there's a world war, all whatever war lost and was decimated, then the world comes together and gives reparations to that land to repair her. That's what happened in World War I and World War II. But there will be none of that this time. The, the nations will not join together to repair her after this war. That's what America's counting on. That's why he's bankrupting America, because they cannot get out of this debt. The only way for America to get out of that kind of debt is go to war. War is the only thing that can cancel out that kind of debt and then rebuild it. And that's what Trump is known for. That's what he does. He comes into a broken, empty, bankrupt uh, land or business, and he claims bankruptcy, destroy it, so, and believes that he's going to build it all over again, but it won't be built this time. He would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Let us go every man to his own country. So they're like, no, we're not going to return and try to build her up. This is a done deal. Let it go. For her judgment reaches unto heaven. That's revelations. And it lifted up even to the skies. He has gone out, Yahweh, our righteousness. Come and let us relate to Zion, the work of Yahweh, our Elohim. Choose the arrows, gather the shields. Yahweh has raised up the spirit of the king of Medes. For his devices is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of Yahweh, the vengeance of his place. And Russia is in the spirit of Cyrus right now as the king of the Medes to destroy the great conquering Babylon. Set up the sign upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Stand up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, for Yahweh has both devised and done that which he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwelleth upon many waters, abundant in treasures. Who's this that's dwelling on waters? Who's this whore that's sitting on many waters, sitting on the neck of the nations? Thine end, the heights, is come, and the measure of you, of your unjust gain, fraudulent, and all of you are guilty of the sins of Babylon, and the blood shut on the earth, because you, black America, are the consumers of Babylon. Babylon has gotten rich off of your free servitude, off of your, um, your desire of servitude, and your commerce. They have gotten rich off of you, and your taxes is allowing the death, murder, kill, warrior, um, uh, nation to have killed and sl- uh, slay people and steal all over Africa, all over the Middle East. We have allowed this to happen. So you're guilty too of the bloodshed. Every man is burned up in his knowledge. Every smell is confounded by the great. I'm in 17. I might have ended. So, uh, uh, did I skip something? Let me see. 16. Did I skip? What did I skip? I'm going to just go back. Yahweh has, I'm, I'm in 14, Yahweh of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, surely I will flee, I will flee thee with men and with locusts and answer and shout against thee. He has made the earth, did I skip, because oh, I finished, I'm sorry, and answer and shout against thee. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he's uttered his voice. There is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapor to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning 
uh, with rain and brings forth the wind out of the store. He's, he's describing a great catastrophe when this happens. He's describing his coming. Every man is burned up by his knowledge. Every smell is confounded by the graven images for his molten images falsehood. And there is no spirit in them. They are vanity, the works of error. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. And Jacob's portion is not like them. He's trying to tell you, this is not your, your blessing. This is not your portion. If the riches of the world is the blessings of the nations, what do you think I have in store for you, O Israel? What do you think that your heritage has been, that I promised you at the mountain is about? For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod or the staff of his inheritance. Yahweh Zebaoth is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy the kingdom. So now he's coming to the purpose of why he needs you to come out to become his army in the wilderness. With you, you will become my battle axe and my weapons of war. Are we picking up weapons of war? No, we're not. It tells us what we're going to do. We're going to shout out the holy name of Yah. When we get sealed, this ain't no voodoo. This ain't magic. We're going to call on the name of Yah with a pure heart and a pure language. And that language is not necessarily what you think is Hebrew. It is Hebrew. It's not lost. But you keep reading when he says that pure language is mean that they won't have a tongue to lie and deceive anymore. Because you don't have power when you call on Yah's name and you have an evil heart. You are actually cursing yourself to call on Yah's name when you are still wicked against his covenant. It yeah, is a commandment. That... Just Say again? You know, three minutes left. Three minutes left. Just letting you know. <laughs> three, minute le- three minutes yep. left. Are you going to cut me uh, 20 minutes? Yeah, got it. Got it. All right. Cut me 20 minutes. All right. So I'm going to skip down. This is what I want to say. It tells you who these nations are, the, uh, these nations that are going to be the leading, the king of the Medes, uh, prepare against her. I'm at 27. The kingdoms of Ararat, which is Turkey, Mani, and Ashkenaz. So when you see Russia and Turkey and China make, and Iran make their allegiance, that is when you know they're coming, and they're doing that now. They're doing that now. Don't you see that, um, that Russia is trading its missiles with these nations right now? So I'm skipping down to 33. There's something in it in particular that I want to show. For thus, I'm in 33. For thus says Yahweh of hosts of Elohei, the door of Babylon is like a threshing floor, and that the time to tread or trample her, it is like it is a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come is telling you where. I'm skipping down because there's something that I'm trying to tell you how much time you got. It tells you right, again. Stand okay, by. I'm in 45. Stand by, Talia. Huh? Stand by. Stand by, stand by for a minute. Just want to let everybody know we're going into the overtime part of the show, y'all. So if you want to hear the rest of the show, the only way you can hear it is by calling in. Everybody else on the internet, you're going to have to call in to hear the rest of the show. 319-527-6239. There's only two minutes left on the air, so we're going into the overtime part of the show. You're going to have to call in to hear the rest. All right, I'm only going to take up 20 minutes. Let me finish this one point, and then I got something to bring up or or something to tell the audience, um, um, some information. And then something to bring up. In 45, it says, now, go you out from inside of her, my people. He's telling you why. Deliver or slip away ever man his own soul from the fierce anger of Yahweh. 46, and leash your heart of fear, and you fear for the report that shall be heard in the land. A report comes one year, and after that, in another year, shall come a report and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. He's telling you. That you're gonna, there's going to be two years of a rumor and a report that this war is happening. When you begin to hear that rumor, and I'm telling you that battle cry, that song that Russia sang for America was the beginning of that report that he declared war. There's going to be a two-year period till the end. That says Yah. That's how much time you got to get out. There's going to be two, and it's going to create a lot of scoffers in Israel because the prophets come way in advance to tell you trouble's coming, trouble's coming. One year goes by, they be like, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. I'm still here. The world is still going. I'm still making money. Another year, another report. Ah, they've been talking this stuff. Ain't nothing happened with Korea. You see what happened. Nothing's going. Russia's just bluffing. Ain't going. Uh, you're going to hear two years of this, and it's going to create scoffers in Israel. 
but the righteous will see and come out. Why? Because he's going to say, it's ruler against ruler. After that, the violence in the land is coming. It's going, to, it's going to be martial law, civil law, and then the war is breaking out. That's how much time you've got. Now, hear the mouth of a prophet. There is a call. There's going to be a call for Jews to come home first. The arise of anti-Semitism is to undermine what's going to happen to you in that land so nobody sees it. So they can look like they're fulfilling the vision. I know from inside that they're angry with you. They are hollering that y'all are screaming their story, and we can't let them do it. So they have to create a situation of anti-Semitism so it can look like the world that they are fulfilling Jacob's trouble. So when you see that, that is also a time. They have to create a Holocaust for their people to look like they're fulfilling the prophecy just like us. There will be a call from this land for Israel to come home. When you see Jews, and not all of them are going to run because they're going to have the same arrogance. When you see an influx of Jews and, and Israelis come from America, y'all better run. That's the sign. Hear me. I'm telling you, I know. I can't tell you how I know. I know they have been propagating this from this land. Right. They have called, uh, 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 um, I spoke to us, uh, uh, old civil rights leaders from the Black Panthers. He told me two years ago before I, I went to the Black Panther um, uh, reunion uh, in Oakland to go out there and speak against them. <laughs> and, and they welcomed me. That was a funny thing. I thought I was going to get stoned. They welcomed me. All the elders wanted to hear what I had to say. I wound up speaking with one elder from, 50, um, from Philadelphia for, for three hours. For three hours. He told me that he visited Israel. I said, oh, yeah, what for? He said that they held a conference here in Israel with all the black um, um, civil rights leaders that were still alive to do. I asked them for what? Because they wanted to know what it was that black America wanted, what we're looking for. And and, and they thought that they were doing something good. They were telling us what we want so so America in lieu with this land could figure out how to trap us in giving us what we want. It's called a fox trap, y'all. You put the peanut butter, you put the cheese, you put the cheddar in the trap, and y'all greedy niggas are going to go for it. Hmm. There is a trap laid. Hear what I am saying. I know what I'm talking about. I know it from proof. He is proving this stuff to me by his word, by his spirit, and from proof. I can't tell you everything. I know. When you see it happening, when you see these Jews get the call, y'all better know that it's time to run. I tell you once again, do not go to the borders of Africa, but if you can't get anywhere else, I do have connections. If you're looking to buy land in Nigeria or West Africa, I'm not commending that, but some of y'all are going to go through the Underground Railroad. That's what it's going to look like. I can get you in touch. That can be a, um, but there's other information that I've got. Those of you that are looking to seek to do what y'all said, to come back to the wilderness, I have information that can help you find out how to get within the borders of this land. I'm not giving that over air. I, you not, nobody's going to just call me, and I'm just giving it out like that because I don't want the wicked gathering with me. Hmm. I'm not walking with no wicked. Hmm. Now, I'm going to end that right there. I've given my message, and if you want to know more, like I said, go look at my lectures. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. So there's something that I want to say. And so Sal is aware of this, and, uh, and, and, and the two people that I'm going to speak about already is, uh, I believe, is an understanding that I'm going to mention them. And so I'm going to give them five minutes to uh, call in and say what it is that they have to say to me. But I'm not having a discussion. A discussion is not offered to them anymore. They have offended a servant of Yah. They have spoken against me from a year, not, and I'm, and I'm speaking, I'm going to say who I'm talking about, Ashanti Woods. I'm not so much speaking about A.B., but he, he aligns himself with her behavior and supports her in her rhetoric, even if he don't know what she's really done. But I've been in communication, in private communication with this girl a year and a half, almost two years ago. So there's personal matters between us that she and I only know. But I'm going to let y'all know, and I got proof of everything that I'm accused this woman of. First of all, she, I accuse her. This message that I came on this show to bring you out, she wasn't the only one. It was other sisters on this show that tried to prevent me from bringing this message. But she did something slick because she knew what my message was when I called in as a caller for the first time on Debate Talk for You and laid wait and ready to undermine what I had to say to try to make me look like I didn't know something stupid. Mind you, I gave this girl a nine-hour lecture on the uh, uh, 
personally a nine-hour lecture on the, the fall of, of Adam and the, the mystery of Genesis. So I was teaching this girl on the side, unofficially. And she undercut me because I didn't have no website. I didn't have no, uh, no, not, she didn't know who I was like that. I didn't tell her everything about me. I was sent to investigate. I saw the, 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 the demonic uh, behavior of this girl when I went back and looked at her videos. But I still had patience. We have a lot of text. I can prove everything I'm saying. I got all the videos now, and I'm telling you that this girl is sitting above you as a demonic Jezebel, teaching women to rebel against authority, teaching men to uh, uh, rebel against authority. She is teaching heresy, and she is teaching women fornication is okay. She is teaching that her authority of scholarship is above all, and nobody can challenge her if they ain't read these books. She has undermined the prophecies. Cause I, and I'm going to show you all the text when her videos came out to, instead, of, instead of us having a conversation that I asked her for, she accuses me of not having love, but I'm going to show you that I gave her love and patience. I asked for a conversation to, to, to rebuke her privately on what she did to me on this show, and I got the text to prove it. Everything that I'm saying about this woman is marked, it is, it is, it is proven, and I put it on I put it on a PowerPoint, and it will be uploaded tomorrow so you know that I'm not false accusing this girl. I'm here to tell you that she's demonically possessed with a male spirit. She's morphing between the two. She is, is she, is, she's demonic. She's teaching women fornication, and I got that marked up. She spoke against what I, um, um, she, she put that, she took down some stuff, but there's stuff still up there to show you the dates and what she put this stuff up there to mark my word. I brought this lesson out on debate talk for, she, for you years ago, I mean, a year and a half ago, on November 8th. I got it all marked. And she talked to me, she spoke to me and tried to undermine me like she didn't know me. And right after the show, the girl called, texted me, I got it on text, be like, thanks for calling this, sis. After she undermined me and they said, could I get the rest of that lecture now? I got a lot of accusation against this woman. And so she, so yes, I've been, no more open conversation was offered to her. I've been following her, and when, she, when I hear folly from her, I've been writing texts. The first two texts, rebuke, and still an offer of compassion to repent openly. No conversations at this point. But she don't respond to Talia Levy because she knows I'm the only one that got the authority to check her like that. So what I did, yes, yes, A.B., yes, you, fin- you figured it out. I gave you all the clues to figure out who I was. I am Shamira Yohani, not all the time, but that time I was. You know why I did it? Because I wanted to draw your arrogant behind out to see how you was going to really respond when you think you got knowledge over somebody and see how you was going to take real correction. So everything that you claim Shamira Yohani of or accuser of is actually false because it's me. I got so much more to say, but I don't have to say it. Y'all can go on my website, and I'm going to show you that this woman is wicked. From her own words, she could try to go down and take her videos down all she wants. I have, I have stripped her videos up that show you what this girl is doing and what she is teaching now. And I spoke to her pastor. She lied to me about her indignation against her pastor while she left her authority. That man was a pedophile. I spoke to your pastor, and you were supporting, and you had righteous indignation against your teacher, against your pastor, against your rabbi, because he openly kicked that pedophile out. And y'all was in support of that. Y'all, you are wicked. Y'all are wicked. Stop listening to that girl. I don't care how many books she reads. Y'all didn't call her. She's demonic. And demonic girls and witches have knowledge, but they don't have the wisdom of Yah. She's smart. She real smart, but she's a fool. Now, I'm going to let her in to speak. Her little five minutes if A.B. want to come in, and I got to answer A.B.'s question. I would love to see, uh, he challenged me to come in and see if I could teach better. It wasn't about a teaching challenge. This girl is touching stuff that she ought not to touch, the angel of Yah, the, uh, the Metatron, read, telling people to go read the Zohar. How dare you? How dare you be so callous? How dare you tell people to go pick up the Zohar that is not sanctioned for us to read? That is a book of witchcraft. It got truth in it, but even the Jews don't let their people touch that. So you don't even know the stories of the people that was practicing Kabbalah. I live in a city where they practice that. The whole city. These people are demonically zest and they got power. Telling people, go pick up the Zohar and get this knowledge for yourself and, and sloppily hand that. So yes, I made a comment. I rebuked you for it. 
and you always trying to compete with my knowledge. When you hear me teach something and you hear me say, you can't stand the fact that somebody done got a golden nugget before you. So you find your way to slip in there and act like you revealing something that ain't nobody revealed before. Like y'all gave you something. Now, if anybody think that I'm false accusing this girl, first I'm speaking. I don't, I'm not going to have no conversation. I know what she's going to try to do, but like I said, a fool can look wise if they shut their mouth. But I'm going to give her the opportunity to address me because that's what she want to do. Now, A.B., I didn't make no threats. What I changed in that wording, as you saw that I thought that I was being uh, um, uh, blocked from, is one word. Instead of saying open shame, I said something you can't handle. That's all that happened. So ain't nothing changed because my word is true and here it is. So now you challenge me to come on this show and this, that's that bull crap street talk. Call in next time. Meet me in the streets. Say something face to Girl, I've been talking to you face to face for a year and a half. You ain't say nothing to me. I can't in my name. You ain't say nothing to me. You know, okay, sis. You could always call me. I got the text. Now, if they want to call in and say something, vodka shot. I'm getting the last word. Say what you got to say. Be careful. No, don't be careful because I'm a woman. Be careful because you didn't know that you was entertaining an angel unaware, a messenger. And I didn't have to announce to you who I was. I was checking you out. Now, All right. are they on the line, Sal? Do they got something to say to me? Yeah, I got them on the line. So as promised, you're going to get them a few Go for it. Go for it. Be- Let them address Go for it. Because right. it's going up tomorrow. All right, stand by. I'm going to let them address it. All right, we got BA, we got Ashanti. You can respond, guys. Shalom, shalom, Mr. Howell. How are you doing tonight? You doing all right? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this is Sister Ashanti. Uh, I have more integrity than than that which is, you know, <laughs> people think, but uh, I mean, an accusation is just that an accusation. And in the words of you know how we say in the West Coast, don't come for me unless I send for you. I didn't know anything about you. You keep game on under the palm, and you reached out to me first, and then you went on some whole little thing, and I blocked you, and I I blocked you on all the social media. So I ain't talked to you. Like, I don't know how long, and you can go check after me, follow after me. I don't really mind, but if I'm a nobody, like, I mean, treat me like a nobody. If I'm nothing, treat me like I'm nothing, treat me like I don't exist. So with that being said, like, I ain't tripping off of nothing nobody got to say about me. So uh, I'm I'm cool where I'm at. So to Yahweh be the glory. That's all I got to say. Greetings, greetings. Uh, this is B.A. Ben Abraham. Um, <clears throat> I don't know this individual. Uh, I don't even know this woman's name. Um, in the comments uh, on the show that Ashanti and myself did, we were naming, we were pulling out sources from the Zohar. We were not advocating and telling people to believe in the Zohar. We were pulling sources from the Zohar to back up the idea and the concept of the Messiah. We were not telling people to worship or take any type of teachings from the Zohar. We were sharing information that is common amongst people who are familiar with the teachings of Zohar and what the elders of Israel at that time period when this when the document was being recorded and their ideas of the Messiah. That's it. I had no idea that this is a, a woman in the comments. All I said was if you had an issue with the information we brought out, get it with Sal and come on and show us anything different. I was not challenging nobody. I was just asking, hey, I have no issue with no one disagreeing, but it was obvious in the comments that this individual, this sister, um, didn't listen to the conversation because we were not advocating to tell people to worship or to listen to the commandments that are written in the Zohar, that's if there are any commandments. We were just drawing our information and showing the idea and the concept of the Metatron, Messiah, and all these different type of ideas that are in there. Uh, That was it. 
so like I said, I've never spoken to this to this woman, to this sister. I don't know her at all, and I had no idea that this was this this sister under a different name. I have no idea. That's all I have to say. All right, uh, I'm gonna let her uh, Leah respond. Yeah, you can respond. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, everything that Ashanti said is a lie and is gonna be proven. Yes, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna if you. I'm gonna. I queued up everything where you could see. I make a comment about Paul, and she said on there. Yes, I was the first one to reach out to her, but based upon her call. When I called in and said what she spoke after me and said, yeah, and that sister from Israel, I'd like to speak to her more to get some more of what she has to bring. I heard it. We were on a line all together. And so Sal doesn't have everyone's number. I'm speak- I was not a permanent guest on that show. And so based on her call, her request to hear my knowledge, because I got it queued up, that's why I reached out to her. Now, every text message that went between us, I got it. It's all on there. I'm going to show you that she's a liar. I'm going to show you what she did. And I'm going to show you that beyond being a liar, that she's teaching wickedness in Israel. She's teaching fornication. I, I can't prove this for her pastor. You can call her pastor. I told her pastor that I would not mention his name, but I was going to refer that I spoke to you and got the real message of why you left underneath your authority. Because that was important to me when I found you, sister, when I wanted to bring you to Israel to teach, I had to check you out and find out. And when you told me about the rebellion, I told you then that whoever that brother was was wrong. But you didn't tell me he was a pedophile. You just told me he was teaching without underneath his. So all of that is going to be proven how she tried to undercut me. You're going to see her say, yo, sis, can I, can I get the rest of that lecture? You want to see me respond to her and says, no, I will not be dispensing no more knowledge to you until we have a conversation. No, A.B. does not know me. No, we have never had a conversation. But if you, if you, you want to believe as close as Ashanti in them is and, and, and that I text in my name when her and Ashanti did a, a lesson on November 8th to override what I had said on that show, about coming out of Babylon, about Matthews, to tell people they ain't had to do nothing. They had, she raised that other yeah. message that anyone is teaching coming out of Babylon is a liar and don't have the faith. You took that one down, but I got the rest. So I'm not going to try to prove myself anymore. I'm going to show you the integrity of this woman, and I'm going to show you what she's teaching is folly amongst women in Israel, and that no matter how much Greek she thinks she knows and how much Hebrew she <laughs> thinks she knows, <laughs> Not ah, I'm talking. That's it. Cut her off, Sal. I gave her a minute. She said she's out. She said she's out. Cut her off. She got her own show. Oh, wow. Sal. Sal. Hello. She has her own show. They ha- I gave them quietly to say whatever they had to say. She said, that's it. I'm out. That's it. They have each. I, I said they got her own show. They can go on their own show and do a whole coup against me, string up whatever they want to say. But when I put this out, when I press that button in the morning, it's going to speak for itself. And I give y'all the judge. Now, concerning the lesson about Metatron, I'm not this, I, I, that's what he's accusing me that I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Go back and listen. Yes, she gave a disclaimer. I was not against her lesson at first. What caused me to be upset is that when she started introducing ideas for Metatron that Enoch, the, she didn't correct herself and make herself clear. And she actually brought out another piece of her own information from Torah or from whatever she was reading from to support the, the doctrine that perhaps Enoch walking with Yah meant that he was taken up and to become. So you did say something. Go back and listen. You said something to support it without clarifying if you were supporting it or not. Then Sister Chica had to say, well, hold up, hold up. Feed it back to me like a baby because you confused that sister. That's when I got upset because you confused that sister and you shouldn't be touching stuff like that. You shouldn't be touching stuff like that and telling people, go get it for yourself. Go read it for yourself. You don't have to introduce false doctrine to teach on Yahweh's unity. It's all in the Torah. And y'all can see my comments, what I made to her. 
You can see my coming. So much so, Abraham, you know this is true, that you had to come at the end of the show and say, well, hold on. Uh, we're not saying that we believe this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ashanti, because that means that you wasn't clear what Ashanti was really saying either. That's the folly that I'm talking about. That is careless. There are teachers on your show that are qualified to teach high mysteries. And they don't even dare touch that. They are more responsible for that. And I, like, I give you a perfect example. I say it like Brother Josh. He gave a wonderful, a wonderful debate on Malchizedek. Do you know how many secret mysteries and books and doctrines that you can go and bring in on Malchizedek? But no, he stuck to Torah to prove his point without going out and, and, and touching high things, high things. So it's going to prove itself. I know what I'm saying. Everything is recorded? No, A.B. did not know who I was, but you can see Ashanti at the end find out who I was. So I don't believe that A.B. is being honest when he came right in after her comments that, wow, you sound like this girl T.L. that I know they try to come at me sideways. He, he, you know who, and then I question, and I said, y'all sure it's not T.L.? You sure? That's when you came in. That's when you came in, B., so you already knew. I made you doubt because I wanted both of, to see both of your arrogance. Show me if that wasn't a challenge. Y'all go back and read it, but it's all on a PowerPoint. I'm going to press the upload button. Y'all going to see how it all transpired. I got all of our text messages, what she did and how she, this girl has no integrity from her pastor to me. On top of that, she's teaching lies. She's teaching false understanding of prophecy. And she is teaching women that it's okay to shack up and that anybody that tells them because they shack up and don't give them no counseling and tell them to go get married, they're going to have a problem with her. This girl has lied to y'all and said she was married for 12 years and by her own admission just found out she wasn't. She was in fornication for 10 years and only got married the last two years while she was living in the truth, while she was called by the Holy Spirit. That's what y'all say. You are assembly of fornicators. Liars and backstabbers And that's what I accuse you of And I'm going to put up my proof And it's going to speak for itself That's the end of that Do what you want Be careful Shanti Be careful as you go around trying to teach people Be careful when y'all send somebody Be careful when he puts his spirit on a woman You better be careful Now you call me a liar It's done Because now I'm going to show you That you are false accusing a messenger of Yah How dare you You think I don't have no proof Y'all, y'all go look up my website, Talia One. In a couple of hours, it's daytime for me now. I ain't got no sleep. Huh? Talia Levy One. I'm going to press the upload button when I get off this phone, eat some breakfast, drink, praise Yah that I got it. I put your word out, and hallelujah. And then I'm going to upload that, and y'all got proof to see it. I know Sal is not going to take down any of his videos or his comments, so y'all can go see it. I explain everything. I show you everything, and most of it is her words, not mine. Lala told everybody, I'm here for the elect, and I'm here to call out the wicked of Israel. Her pronunciation, if I think she's nobody, then I don't need to care about her. Yah is coming for nobodies. He's coming for breast-sucking babies. That's what he calls y'all, nobodies. Go, go get them. I should have read the prophecy where he said, go after them. Go after these shepherds that are misleading my sheep, these nobodies, these breast suckers that think they're intelligent. That's my job. And don't think that I'm picking on old little Ashanti. I'm not, I don't have no thing against women. You go to my, you see, I'm picking on some, some warrior men. I, my life has been threatened for calling out liars and, and false leaders. I'm going after who y'all tells me. And if you put yourself in my path to speak against my message, which you did, then you're in trouble. Lala told Israel, peace to the elect, salvation, truth, and faith to you and to the rest. Y'all's judgment is coming. Y'all's judgment is coming. A prophet is speaking, and he's setting a mark on the house of Israel. Lala told everybody.